Welcome to the War Room. This is where we warm up all things tournament related before we head on into the Officer Club Championship broadcast for this month. My name is Olavur Rappstenason and I am joined here by an excellent panel of experts. These are familiar faces for you all at this point. Uh, I am, of course, referring to uh, Bubbles, who is up there. And then I believe, yeah, there's Spoos and uh, over there is Darkness. So uh, how are you guys doing today, Bubbles? Yeah, I'm doing really, really well. I, I'm super excited uh, for the event today. We've got some fairly interesting decks, which is something we see happen fairly often when we've had a, a patch just come out. So I'm really excited to see how they work out. Yeah, um, I would say like a little bit, you know, uh, of, of diversity in, in decks today. I mean, um, considering the last time we had a, a really, really aggressive deck lineup. Looks like some people are starting to tech up against those uh, aggressive decks and, and looking for alternative lines of play and tournament strategies. Uh, what about you, Darkness? How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm so happy to be here with you and getting big into the cards action, into the cards esport. Uh, you know, I mentioned I, I was moving and yes, I moved. I started a new job. I found new friends and I'm, I'm struggling with my free time currently because those new friends and um got, got me into a concept called social life with meeting and eating <laughs> and stuff like that and it's all taking place in the video in the in the reserved time for video games between work and sleep so i i had to make a lot of cuts and lost a lot of time for for video games and I'm really sorry about that. But <laughs> all, all, I'm doing great, and I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, you found uh, you found a new PvP server. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, what about you, Spoos? How are you doing? Yeah, um, doing really good. The summer already started in Germany. I had some really nice weather this week. Um, been at the gym this morning. Just took a little nap, and now we're here to see some some more Hammer gameplay and Brit Air, and also some other decks. Um, Pretty excited to see the other decks, how they play out. We have some interesting stuff to come and yeah, can't wait to see the players in action today. Yeah, we'll get into the decks in just a second. But before we do that, let's bring up the bracket and talk about uh, today's matchups a little bit. Um, we start there uh, at the top of the bracket where we have uh, Captain A, who's going to be taking on Tang Tang. Tang Tang um, has been performing uh, amazingly, as has basically the entire competitive community from uh, China and Asia in recent tournaments. But uh, Captain A coming from Malaysia there. Now, Captain A, he's been um, one of those players that's been around the fringe of like these top fours, top eights for a long time. I believe we've seen him seen his name a couple of times in the cards open bracket, you know, having made it to the top 16. But this is the first time that I believe we see him on broadcast. So it's going to be interesting to see how he does uh, today. Then below that, we have J-King7 versus Cappuccino. Uh, then Ever Garden versus Tiger. And finally, Noen5 versus Artemisia. And it's interesting that, you know, J-King7 now is the only player from the Western community represented in this top eight bracket in the OCC. Um, now, I think it's clear by this point that the the, the Eastern players and the, the Chinese players and the Asian players are really, really strong. So do you think uh, J King is going to be able to defend the honor of the West here today, Bubbles? I think if anyone can, it's J King. Um, he's possibly the, the most capable and consistent player in the entire game. We've had lots of people come in for long periods of time and then leave and then try to come back at some point. But J King's never left. He's been there time and time again. And uh, he just has this drive for cards, which, you know, outdoes even himself. The amount of times I've heard him say, I don't think I'm going to focus on this season. I'm going to get an early night's sleep and not worry about it. And then I wake up in the morning, I boot it up and I go, he got rank one. <laughs> he told me I was going to bed. So, it, you know, he has this drive for the game, which I think is unmatched by pretty much any other player. Um, and I think that's a big part of why he's so con consistently here and why he's still here, even though most of the Western community has been pushed out. Speaking of J-King, um, one of the decks that we want to highlight now is uh, the Soviet deck from J-King. It it's a Soviet-Japan deck, which is a combo that we haven't seen in quite some time. Uh, Darkness, uh, tell us a little bit about this deck. Yeah, this... 
I feel like this deck, this Soviet Japan control deck is should should be called J King's Spirit because technically it is J King's Spirit for the game. He loves those long ongoing games. He loves to make the the fatigue uh, yeah the fatigue matches the old performing matches where you just play and play and play until your opponent makes a mistake. What requires that you are not making mistakes, but Jay King is able to do that over a long period of t of turns. So in in this turn uh, deck, in this deck, you see a lot of anti aggro. Like last time, we saw only aggro, and as you mentioned before, people are starting to take against it, like bloody sickles, engineer battalion, and eight hundred forty fifth rifles. Uh, on, only those few cards are probably one of the best anti-aggro cards in the game because they're able to deny a lot of early pressure and giving you a lot of heal. And the, the rest of the deck is focused on that too with the Bryanx Irregulars, Scorched Earth, the Hammer three times, Amphibious Assault three times, even two... 52k <clears throat> artilleries so J King is very well prepared against aggro and you may overlook the cards like spiring two times or yeah. heroes of the soviet nation one time but those those cards and the kv1 one pat partisans the tractor factory uh, those few cards, like like five control cards, uh, are the essence of this deck because there is a huge part just being able to fight against aggro, to stand up against aggro. Then a bit, another big part is like parade or 61st infantry regiment cycling through the deck while setting up defenses. And with those few cards, you really have to make the move. You need to identify identify uh, the weakness of your opponent's deck and being able to plan your entire deck to to kill your opponent. Rather it's through fatigue, uh, counting the cards or denying the one win condition. And if anyone can master this kind of deck, it's Jaking. Yeah, I mean, J King, he's long been known for being a, a Soviet player, right? I mean, when when I kind of got into the game and, and joined um, the company, like that that was his identity, right? He was this Soviet master that would take everything into fatigue. And wasn't it wasn't it a match between you and J King Darkness that I that we had to like have one of you surrender because you were locked in an infinite uh, back and forth Soviet war, and neither of you would back down. It's it was Rufkin and oh yeah I, I, yes it was one and a half hours. Yeah, I mean, I just I remember like uh, you know this is how I got introduced to J King and now we see him bringing <laughs> the Soviet back and um, scorched earth being packed in there. Bubbles, you have been a big proponent of uh, packing in some scorched earths um, in in the lists. Why 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 do you like to see these cards? I mean, I feel like it's just the perfect aggro counter. I know a lot of people feel like it got nerfed, but I don't think it got nerfed. I think it just got adjusted. Maybe you don't always run three of them because they don't stack anymore. You just bring it down to two. But this counters pretty much every single aggressive deck in the game. It counters Jagro, it counters Brunair, it counters Legions. You know, you name it, this counters it. It even counters the Hummer deck. If they drop turn one Hummer and those parachute regiments, you can just respond on your turn two with your Scorched Earth, and that completely bricks their rush. Um, one of the few decks this doesn't count, I'd say, would be like Heinz or something like that, because they can often blitz out lethal. But for the most part, you're countering pretty much every single aggressive deck in the game, and it's actually not bad against control. You can mm -hmm. very much, you know, screw over your, your opponent's tempo um, with Scorched Earth, even in these control matchups. I think it's a super underrated card, and I'm so glad to see Jake and Bring too. I know it's a little bit heretic of me, but it might be my favorite card in the game. 
<laughs> well, uh, there's one person today that is bringing um, a tool to deal with this, and, and that's the deck that, that I'm going to toss over to you in a little bit, which is this uh, Soviet USA deck from Cappuccino. And there he is packing three bulls to the ranks. So <laughs> kind of potential to backfire uh, against Cappuccino in particular, but he's the only one packing those bulls to the ranks. But talk to us uh, about this Soviet US deck here from Cappuccino. So this is an, uh, an OTK deck in, in every way. You know, we've got the Great Patriotic War, we've got the Ura, um, but then how are we bursting out this damage? Well, we've got OT34, and now this can be used, it can be buffed up, and then you play the Ura, and you smack a unit in the front line, and it does all this leftover damage. It's going to be a huge amount of damage. Um, now, it only doubles once. It used to double and then double again, so it would quadruple the damage, which means, you know, I ended up doing like 40, 50 damage in <laughs> one turn with an OT34. Um, so it's not quite that insane, but it's still pretty good. And players focus so much on this OT34 that they forget, hey, I can just sort of, you know, stand fast, bolster one of my regulars, and then use my regulars as the OTK. You have a lot of these tools that can just win the game out of nowhere. And then you do have a little bit of extra burn of cards like battery and this sort of thing where you can just target the face directly. Um, I, I'm super excited to see how this deck works. I want to see this deck go as far as it possibly can. This is a very much store the game, delay it as much as you can, and then go for one big sweep and end the game. Uh, I do apologize for my bird as well. He's rather excited by OTK. It's also his favorite deck. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like every time the OCC starts, your bird uh, starts chirping, right? So, um, but I, there's, there's a card in there that is uh, from the new set, right? Battery. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that one. So battery, it, it's a USA order. It targets, uh, you target a unit, you do some damage to it, and then any leftover damage, you do it to the face. Um, now it's worth noting, you can't directly target the face for this. You do have to go through a unit, but you can kill one of your own units if you have a low defense unit. Uh, it's nice removal, but it's also a nice way of just doing a little bit, you know, two extra damage to the face, that kind of thing, just to finish it off. So it's it's quite an interesting card. We've not seen it ramp before because most USA decks don't really have a slot for it. Ramp mm -hmm. can just pack better removal. Aggro and mid range, you know, it, it's far too slow and expensive. But OTK decks might just be where it finds a home. Okay. Um, now, we talked a lot about, you know, there's a lot of aggressive decks and um, we're not really highlighting a lot of them here during the war room. Um, maybe if we have time, we'll go through some of them. But I mean, those are mo mostly kind of uh, known at this point, right? It's a German Humber deck. It's the Jagro. It's the Brit Air. Um, the next deck up that we want to look at uh, is the USA Italy deck here from uh, No One Five. And uh, this one is interesting to me. I mean, it is very, very aggressive, and it's use, using the Fiat and the Machi uh, airplanes from the Italy side. Spooz, talk to, uh, talk to us about this deck. Yeah, very cool new archetype. Um, as you can see, only eight Italian cards are played, and those are both airplanes. Interesting that this deck um, just makes a combo possible that, that Bubble just mentioned in the last um, cards open. Like if all stars align, like for example, you're going second and you have a starting hand like Patton and four of the Fiat CR42, you can just burst out eight damage on turn one. And with the follow up carrier cover, you can just burst out another 12 and you have a turn two um, lethal. It is very unlikely, but it has the potential. That alone is just what that makes that that deck so interesting. But yeah, the base of this deck is just just looks like the normal us frontline deck you have stars like greyhound you have the shermans in it you have half tracks island hopping sky train all that strong basic us cards that just you just play in almost every us deck um but then you also have cards like we can do it and that just give you the potential to just build a really huge board and then just overwhelm your opponent with this and also interesting is to see this, that there's the Hellcat in it, um, a card yeah. that I think we have not see a lot in any competitive play. Um, can be very strong with carrier cover or combined with the pattern. You can blitz out and suddenly have a 3-2 airplane. Yeah. So some really cool synergies in this deck. Um, also, Island Hopping makes it really cool with the, with the Feared, if you can stack some of these and then just get the Island Hopping in with zero operation cost. You can have a turn three Island Hopping and maybe make your CRs even bigger, just your, your fears. Also the Maki not dying now, just 
and receiving two damage when your opponent's having more units is really cool change and makes the card a little bit more viable, I guess. Oh no, it's just defense, it's not the units. Okay, so even even better. Yeah. And that means two credits, a 2-4 airplane. That is really, really strong stats. And I'm wondering why he's only playing one carrier cover. Could maybe play two or three, just so you can get more buffs onto these airplanes and make them even scarier for your opponent. But yeah, I think he just wants to have more units because carrier cover alone when you don't have fighters on board is just a dead card and probably wants to have some stuff to to deal with early on. And cards like Red Devils and I mean, 32nd Infantry are just staple of every US deck and strong enough to be to, to deal with early aggression from your opponent and also establish a board to follow up German and stuff like that. So I mean, I'm interested to see how, how this goes with the Ildili Ally here. I'm looking at the credit curve, and I believe I have never seen 16 one credit cards in a single deck. Uh, that 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 to me sounds pretty crazy, and it, it makes me feel as well that like finding Patton within the first like two or three turns here can be you know basically against a lot of decks and in a lot of situations just like the win card, right? If you if you're able to establish a massive board with Patton. Um, over those uh, first couple of turns, right? Um, I think that could be uh, very well uh, the snowball that you need to to get to victory. Yeah, absolutely. Also, Patton 32nd is a nice combo. So you only need two cards, like the Patton and 32nd, and suddenly you have four 2 1 infantries in your support line. Problem is, next turn yeah. you can only operate with two of them, but you have four units on board on turn one. And if your opponent is not playing any orders that deal mass damage to units, you. Yeah, you have a good board there and can pressure your opponent early on. It's very interesting. Do you, uh, Bubbles Darkness, do you have any uh, further comments on this deck? Because um, I feel like this is a deck that is kind of a new deck. Um, I, this might be banned even, right, in the matchup, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing this one. I mean, uh, there's one thing I briefly want to mention, which is he has added a couple US fighters. Obviously, he got the Skytrain, but he's also got the P40 to help this carrier cover be of more use. Um, it would be a dream come true to see a buffed up uh, uh, Sky Train going for <laughs> lethal or something. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'm I'm looking at this Feared, and I believe this is a really good deck to make this change work. Like, imagine you're having one Red Devil, Patton, and three times Feared, and you're going second. This this. <laughs> You, you can play Patton, drop a single unit, and get like two or three Fiat's in the support line with zero operation cost and two two stats, and this is super scary. But One of thing... course, you, you, you need Patton to do that very uh... effectively. I have one question about this deck. Do you think draw could become an issue here? Because, I mean... You have 16 cards that cost one credits, right? I mean, you can really easily dump your hand here. Does this deck require you to sometimes hold back any units or, you know, yeah. do you think you can run into some issues with, with the draw? Well, this deck is running with four Shermans and this is definitely necessary. Another card draw is coming from Catalina and we can do it. And we saw earlier those US aggro lists performing very, very well in terms of card draw with those cards. Especially since those 32nd Infantry Regiment are sinning the deck. You need to catch one of them very early and draw those out of the deck to hire the chance of getting a Sherman. And sometimes you, you can hold a Sherman in Mulligan just to be able to refill your hand, it's very necessary. Yeah, all right, that makes a lot of sense. All right, now let's uh, focus a little bit more on the control side uh, again here and take a look at the deck uh, from Tank Tank, Germany, Italy here. Um, and I feel like this one is, is more of a, a classic control type deck that we've seen multiple times before. Um, Spooz, why don't you talk us a little bit through this deck? Um, yeah. Uh, this is German Italy control, as you already mentioned. Um, a deck that is really effective against decks like Brit Air, but I think also against the, the Hummer deck, because it has cards like Sudden Strike and the Flump Panzer in it. Uh, yeah. 
Wait, is it even in it? One mm. flam panzer, one, one flam panzer. Yeah, yeah, also rice research is really good, but also you have cards like Mar Nostrum in it. That even if you fall a little bit behind in the early game, you can just drop one big unit, play Mar Nostrum in it, and have the potential to heal for an insane amount of of um, health there. And then you have cards like Jack Bomber. This this deck is really really heavy. And do you know what also is in the deck? The yes. King Tiger. Yeah, that's why I really I've, wanted to see this deck up here because this is the weird. first time that I see it in a list, right? I think Cappuccino is also having this in, in their list, if I'm not completely wrong here. But yeah, it's it's cool to see that card first time competitive. And yeah, I can't wait to see this in action. A card that I found really underwhelming so far. And I'm pretty excited to see how they perform today. Because yeah, it's having so, many, so much operation cost mm -hmm. and... Yeah, you can have it in your support line, but if your opponent is just having five units in the front line, constantly damaging your face, uh, that King Tiger is not doing a lot. But then you have the good, um, those good control tools, like the, he's also playing with the U88, that is yeah. also um, it's very frightening for your opponent, because you can just steal his units with this. And then you have cards like Annihilation, really good removal, you get, get rid of a unit, from your opponent and additionally make him discard one card and wolf pack sky barons so a really good control deck and also with some good guards like bologna regiment three credits for three seven guard is really strong and that hammer deck might struggle against this because as far as i know they don't have good removals against guards they're mm -hmm. really really heavy relying on getting the early turn two handshell on on the hammer bringing in the early damage and then just yeah, hope for the best that the opponent is not running guard into guard into guard. That's the biggest problem, and that's what the Bologna is very good um, in that matchup there. Yeah, I feel like, uh, I mean, kind of jumping on that topic, uh, we, we see a few people here bringing that German Humber deck uh, today. But looking at the lists that it's going up against, I feel like, I feel like that's still very strong on ladder, uh, but I think it's going to struggle pretty heavily uh within the the tournament scene or at least given the list that we're seeing here today what are your thoughts about that bubbles um sorry say again i literally just empty-headed <laughs> <laughs> i was saying i was talking about the german humber decks um you know those have been extremely powerful on the ladder they kind of came out of nowhere um a lot of people were going like man this needs to be nerfed nothing can do anything about this but i yep. feel like given the the kind of control lineups that we're seeing and the kind of teching against aggro that we're seeing now in the tournament scene i think these decks are gonna struggle pretty heavily um if if you know they're, they're now reliant on your opponent not finding their sudden strikes or you know their early removals instead of like just being super powerful that they can steamroll everybody i mean yeah i, I certainly think people have teched a lot more for against it i, I mean these scorched earths themselves are a good example but we're seeing people pack free flams free suddens we're seeing this number one commandos which just one shots in a unit i think the people uh thing people are realizing is traditional damage doesn't work anymore you need hard strong targeted removal you need this is going to kill this no matter its size and you also need where you also need ways of slowing it down however one thing we've seen with aggro versus control is no matter how much you prep for it it's always got a strong chance of just steamrolling you you can get that bad mulligan you can get as much prep as you want in and it doesn't matter sometimes they're just going to steamroll you and i think that's one of the inevitabilities of it so I wouldn't write the deck off. I, I'd certainly expect to see it, you know, dominate some games today. But I don't think it's going to be as unbeatable as it was before. And uh, yeah, my brain's back now. Sorry about that. You know, <laughs> you, you know, in the cartoons when the fly goes in through one ear and it comes out the other. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've got that going on, you know. But no, I, I certainly think it's going to be less problematic than it was before. But I certainly wouldn't write the deck. All right, for sure. Um, now, I want to bring up this deck here from Captain A a little bit, right? Um, he's bringing, he's bringing Germany Brit, and then he's bringing Brit Germany, and it seems like both are kind of attending to uh, to do the same thing. This is a, a lot of kind of discard, a lot of hand manipulation. Um, he's got you know three U16s there. He's got the Fog of War, the Mi5s, uh, Wolfpack, uh, Annihilation. 
given the the tournament meta and and the meta that we've been seeing recently i've i've not been seeing a lot of this but now captain a is bringing it into the top eight how do you think this deck is going to perform today darkness well uh, this deck performed very well earlier this year actually like december january february j king was bringing this like three months in a row every single tournament and he was very successful i think two times second place because this deck uh is is really able to to destroy aggro like look if you look deeper into it nachshub is giving you a lot of tempo against aggro and with three sudden strikes and three flam panzer and two volksgrenadier and two seaforce highlanders this deck is a nightmare for every aggro player and after you are able to hold against the early pressure of aggro you're just discarding them because most aggro decks are uh, only playing the necessary amount of card draw not not like an optimized amount to to fight against anything no just just like the necessary amount and if they're running into aggro uh, and if they're running against this card aggro is struggling often so the wolf packs as uh, a u16 the draw deny with fog of war and admiral hipper this is super scary for aggro so i'm actually i'm wondering why j king didn't uh put those decks back like those old tournament decks but Captain A did, and I think it's definitely a very good choice here. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be a very very interesting one. Now, that's the last of the decks that we're gonna be reviewing in the war room here. But I want to go around and just talk a little bit about your predictions for today, right? Um, so it's not gonna be like super game specific or anything like that i just want to put you all on the spot here and ask you uh in order who do you think is gonna win so starting with you bubbles who do you think is gonna win today and why i have got a feeling it's gonna be captain a because the last time we saw someone go out their way bring two discard decks and no one else had even considered it they destroyed everyone i think captain a has the capabilities and i think honestly i think he has the best decks okay well, interesting. I mean, uh, we talked about it earlier. I mean, Captain A, this is the first time that we see him kind of break through into the broadcast, and uh, it would be really, really cool to see him take a run and grab that title. Uh, now over to you, Darkness. Who do you think is going to take it and why? Well, I wanted to say Captain A too. But now I'm going to say J King, because he's, uh, he's back to his roots. He's bringing his Soviet deck and sticking to the all-time dominant air deck as well. Um, and yes, of course, he has like the most experience even fighting against a lot of super strong player from China. So I'm I'm voting for checking here. All right. And finally, Spooz, uh, who do you think is going to take this one? Um, so I, I don't think that Captain A will take this one um, because he's up against Tank Tank round one. And... Sure, he's bringing some some discard and some anti-control tools, but Tank Tank is not bringing that many aggressive lists. He's only bringing British US Air. His other decks are German Elite Control 2 and then US Poland Legions. Um, so I, I go for Tank Tank here, honestly. Um, I can also say from experience, facing Tank Tank in round one is not a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's the season winner. He just... He just showed how, how strong he is, and I think it's an, a safe pick to go with Tang Tang. Yeah. I mean, Tang Tang has now put together a few season wins, right? I mean, he's he's really dedicating himself and, and showing his ability both on the ladder and in the tournament scene in the past few months. So I don't think it's a, it's a dangerous bet that you're making there, Spooz. I think it's yeah. a, it might be a pretty good one. Well, that's going to be it for us. This War Room will be right back in just a few minutes with the Officer Club Championship broadcast itself. So don't move a muscle. Get ready, and we'll be right back.
Welcome everybody to the May Officer Club Championship. My name is Olavur Hrafn Steinarsson, also known as Ole Krume, or Big O, like the community likes to call me. I am joined here by Darkness, and we're going to be bringing you the first series of today. Darkness, uh, it is time for the tournament. Are you excited? Are you feeling good? I'm feeling good, and I'm super excited. Let's bring up the bracket here and check who's facing who first. Absolutely. Well, the two uh, the two matches that we're going to show from the quarterfinals are going to be Captain A versus Tank Tank and then J King 7 versus Cappuccino. So the top two matches there in the bracket off stream, we're going to have Evergarden taking on Tiger and then No One 5 taking on Artemisia. Well, I think No One 5 versus Artemisia is going to be an absolute banger of a match, but the first one up that we have is going to be Captain A versus uh, Tang Tang, and then follow that. Uh, we're going to follow that with J King Seven versus Cappuccino. But before we jump into the action, let's get to know our players a little bit more. So we'll start by bringing up the player profiles here, um, starting with Tang Tang. So Tang Tang, there, as you can see. Uh, uh, really good player he ended up uh, first in the season he's been putting in the season wins uh, in recent months most played nation is britain and i want to highlight that he is rocking uh, an above 70 percent win rate in over 10,000 matches which is absolutely insane to me and uh bubble said it in the war room you know, facing Tang Tang in match number one of the OCC is not a good time. So Captain Hay is going to have a challenge ahead of him in uh, today's tournament. So next up, uh, Captain A. Yeah, Captain A, total matches of 15,600. This is a huge number. And at this number, he's uh, standing next to next with all of the veterans of cards. Similar like J King, like myself, like Drogir. And from those 15,000 plus matches, he still maintains a win rate of 61%, or is absolutely massive. He finished yep. season 18th. That means Captain A didn't qualify directly for the OCC, what is a lot easier to, to get into. He played through the playoffs where you are facing 15 other player best of 16 and only one player progresses well this is captain a and he's coming in with most played germany and his favorite card the m4 sherman yeah captain a i, I want to to add a, a, a small note about him because I I know him from a lot of tournaments. It's like Captain A is always there, they are always in the tournament, always playing, but was never on stage. Yeah. Well, now we see Captain A slowly but steady progressing and evolving, and this is his OCC. Um appearance. So I'm very happy for him that that he grinded himself and he keep getting better and better and i'm looking forward to see his performance yeah and i mean uh, i'm i'm excited for the next cards open as well because i feel like there are a few players that aren't really kind of focusing on the ladder grind that have been making it further and further in the tournament scene um and we saw that in the last cards open just a, a couple of players that have been around the tournament scene and have pretty much watched every broadcast i've noticed them in every single time we go live there in twitch chat um and now they're making it almost into the top four of the last cards open so if you guys want if anyone watching is interested in trying out some competitive cards signups for the next cards open are um live so check that out but next up here we have uh sorry. sorry cappuccino yeah wow i completely blanked lost all my notes but uh they have uh 17,476 matches that's a lot of matches um <laughs> and uh, like i i feel like pretty much the rest of the the 
people here in the OCC. They are maintaining a 65.6% win ratio. And in general, when you're talking about card games, right, anything above 50, 55 is, is considered good. If you're at 60%, it's insane. But 65%, 70%, um, these are players that are coming in and from the moment that they step into the game of cards, they've found uh, a home and, and uh, just a path for their strategic superiority to be able to maintain this, right? You can't enter the game and spend a thousand games learning um, how to play card games and then end up with that win ratio. So these are all seasoned players uh, coming from probably other card games as well. Uh, they finished the, this season in fourth place, most played Britain, and then favorite card is Liberation. Uh, they are, of course, also representing the Chinese community. Uh, but up next, the only Western player in the Officer Club Championship top eight this month, and your teammate, King 7 and your finals opponent from last year's World Championship Darkness. Tell us a little bit about Yeah. Jake. This is Jay King, member of Team Ammo, total matches 17,499. This is 23 matches more played than Cappuccino, but roughly 701 more than Cappuccino. And he's very close to 70% win rate, 69.4%. That is just amazing. Uh, he finished fifth. What is a surprise? Usually he finished first place. Well, the Chinese player are really after him recently. And yeah, J King is one player with the most season wins, with the most tournaments wins. He's current world champion. He bet me in the final on stage. I remember that, Oli. Thank you for the flashback. And overall, he is the most um he, he is the like best cards esport player in in cards in this esport scene if you're looking at his profit as the numbers at his money so he's definitely ambitious and he's aiming to win today as well yeah and um you say he's ambitious right ammo stands for ambitious moves if i'm not uh, mistaken right you're right <laughs> so uh, i i also just want to throw back to something that he said during his uh winning interview at the world championship um he said you know now that i've won the world championship i don't necessarily feel the same need to get first every season so uh that might also just play a factor into why he isn't winning every season um keep in mind 2021 J King did win 11 out of 12 seasons in the year so we know that he can do it if he puts his mind to it but looks like he's just um comfortable being in the top six securing himself into the the top eight of the occ each month and not really pushing as much for those season wins all right next up here another member of the chinese community that is ever garden um this player has many 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 fewer matches than the veterans that we've been seeing so far but still uh, a respectable 64.19 percent win ratio but only 5,273 matches so Evergarden really climbing up the ranking pretty quickly um, in uh, you know not as many matches as many of the other players here and when you get into a tournament setting like this where the margins become just that much smaller than they do on ladder the mistakes become that much uh, fewer, the deck lists are open, uh, experience could be a deciding factor. So this is, I believe, the second time we see Evergarden in a tournament broadcast here for cards. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how they progress in this tournament and just in general in cards esports moving forward. Now let's swap on over here to uh, Tiger. Tiger. Yeah, the next one is Tiger, also from... China total matches of 10,000, so he's a veteran as well. Very close to 60 uh, to 64 percent win rate, what is definitely impressing. Uh, not the highest today, we will see, but not the lowest as well. Tiger is another very strong tournament player as well. Uh, roughly one year ago, 
he he had his appearance on the spot in Officer Club Tournament 11 in April 2020, 21. Yes, uh, he lost in the final against Ray Ray there, and after that he also got third or fourth place in the cards open. So Tiger is a constant in those participations. Sometimes, like sometimes he, uh, they are showing up. Sometimes they are a little bit under the radar. But he's definitely successful whenever he's really getting into it. And yeah. this is and look, why, he, why he's got a stadium. Here. He's got a stadium of people behind him, right? I wonder if that's yeah. where he's playing today. You know, he's got 20,000 <laughs> Chinese fans just chanting Tiger behind him as he as he plays each card. Probably. I guess you need some support to be able to qualify through the OCC qualifier. He, he only finished 24th this season. And he made, uh, they, they made their way against the, everyone else in the qualifier. So I'm I'm always impressed of those who are making it because I I never made it just through as a qualifier. It, it's really hard. It is. I mean, it is uh, definitely, and it's it's really interesting. I was having a a conversation the other day with a friend of mine, um, and he did like Olympic level fencing, and they actually um, changed the way that they did the tournament formats in fencing because it turned out that the ones that were coming in through the the qualifiers effectively um were coming in kind of warmer and had warmed up more uh, and kind of gotten used to the the feel of the arena so uh sometimes i believe that can also be the case here in cards where these players that are playing in through the qualifiers because i mean you know the season ended 21 days ago so the meta has evolved since um, the placement that they got on ladder so getting a chance to kind of warm up in the tournament meta um, play against the other top players in the game can become a very beneficial thing and allow you to make those tweaks to your decks before you get into the top eight that can bring you to victory yeah you're absolutely right M maybe we should rethink about the qualifier i don't know well, I mean, until we see the the qualifying players that have to go in through the play-ins uh, constantly win, I think we're I think we're pretty good. Um, but let's move on here to Noen Five. Um, Noen Five, of course, I believe he needs no introduction at this point, uh, but we will introduce him anyway since there are a lot of new players uh, joining cards these days after we got launched on Epic Games. So if you're coming from the Epic Games client, welcome, welcome, welcome. But Noen Five, he is one of the titans of the Chinese scene. He has been consistently within the, the top eight of the Officer Club Championships. Uh, he has made it and won cards opens and uh, just in general, an extremely powerful player and uh, i feel like you know big news you know he's not bringing us legions uh, this time around uh, but i believe that's the first time in at least like five or six uh, seven tournaments that we're not seeing him bring that deck but you can also see from his uh, total matches and his win rate that this is a guy that knows how to play 12,067 matches and a 73% win rate across those absolutely uh, beast mode stats here from Noen5. Uh, the, right. next, the next one is Artemisia. They, they have pretty impressive stats too, like 9,000 plus total matches is relatively a uh, seen not a lot compared to the other players like J King etc but with only 9000 matches they are having an 64% plus win rate and they are constantly a very high qualified in the OCC very high at the season endings and regularly in those tournaments so artemisia they they are another veteran here as well and i'm expecting a lot from his from their performance today all right well now we know who the players are and it is time to get ready for the first matchup of today which is going to be captain a versus tang tang now, before we head on into the match, let's take a brief look at the decks that each player is bringing to the mix, starting with Tang Tang's decks. 
All right. Yeah, Tank Tanks decklist. I, I really love this deck. It's German Italy control. It has a lot of control aspects like Sudden Strike, Bologna Regiment to stand strong against aggro. Huge heal potential is Mara Nostrum, for example, combined with the 998th Infantry Regiment, blitzing out a big unit and healing back. Uh, also, it has some some hand control with Wolfpack, Admiral Hipper, and of course those huge huge control cards like Schwalbe and Leopold and the King Tiger. So this is a very dominant control deck. Absolutely. The yes, the next deck of Tang Tang, well, we all know this deck. It's US Poland Legion. It uses a lot of infantry units combined with buff cards like Unity is Strength and of course and the medical battalion and we can do it to to make those units who getting flooded onto the board like a mortal and pushing those huge numbers and this is not scary enough be because there are the legions legion cards having the intel mechanic every time you play an intel card they are getting buff plus one plus one and with a little bit of extra tempo, like United We Stand, this deck has proven to be a very dominant tournament deck. So actually we are surprised only a very few player bringing this deck today. Yeah, I think it's only Tank uh, Tank. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's surprising, but... Well, the next deck, the next deck is Brit US, it's Air. This deck is a little bit more dominant even than the Legion deck. You are using a lot of British airplanes like the Gladiator and Swordfish combined with close air support to, to get actually huge buff. And now it's spread it among one, two or three units. Instead, uh, it's buffing a single unit. It, this makes it way harder to get rid of those buff, for example, with Flam Panzer or Sudden Strike. And yeah, this deck as well is using the United We Stand tempo buff as long as the AoEs with Empire Strikes and we, of course the Spitfire able to get Fury or getting buffs to to finish the turns really fast with a lot of potential. Yeah, I feel like I feel like you know Brit Air. It's been a staple of the game ever since uh, the game basically got released. So uh, I think our our players will always find a way to evolve this deck uh, into something. I mean, now USA coming in as the ally had traditionally been Japan, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this performs today, as we have seen quite a varied approach here. Um, and yeah. as we take a look at the decks from Captain A here. And uh, he's bringing um, two decks very centered around control discard. Uh, as we talked about in the War Room, Bubbles really liked these decks um, and feels like Captain A has the best decks in the tournament. So it's going to be interesting to see here. In this one, Germany, main nation, Brit ally, you have a lot of discard here. You got the U16s, um, you got the... the, the, the uh, Wolfpack, the Annihilations, um, the Fog of War allows you to take a unit off the field, put it on the top, MI5, and against some of these aggressive decks in the tournament, this might become an issue um, and kind of hinder them to putting that tempo on the board because they simply won't have the cards in hand to actually play them. Um, and taking a look at the next deck here from Captain A, that is a role reversal here. The main nation now being Britain, the ally being Germany. And a similar tactic, again, three U16s. Uh, he's got two Flampanzers. He's got the Wolf Packs, Annihilations. On the Brit side, he's got the MI5 still, the Fog of War. Um, and packing in, of course, the Churchill Avre as well, as well for a lot of retreat and, and throwing units back into hand. And 
a lot of control there as well, which is, of course, what Britain brings, right? With the Monty, with the Shelling, with the Sexton, the Seaforth Highlanders. Um, th these are both decks that can cause a lot of issues for the more aggressive decks in the tournament. And it's going to be interesting to see um, if either one of these gets banned. But then the final deck here for Captain A, one of the decks that we did highlight... Um, uh, no, we did not. We did not go through this we one, actually. Not, no, no uh, but this is the Soviet Italy deck. Talk to us a little bit about this one, um, Darkness. Well, this deck fits very well in, in the general matchup, the lineup of Captain A. As you see, there is a lot of anti-aggro, the Briancs, Irregulars, mobile defense. I'm a huge fan of this card. Uh, removals with Confusion and Hammer, even three times the artillery. 52k and more guards like Blockner Regiment, T60, First Rifles. This one is a very massive anti aggro deck. Combined with cards like Mare Nostrum and Engineers Battalion, this is able to heal quite a lot. And you, you can see those tech cards like the 52. And the Semi Wante. The Semi Wante is a 3 credit tank, 3 3 heavy armor 1, dealing double damage against tank. If you combine this with Marinastrum, you are able to get plus 8 health attacking into a tank, and often this one survives, able to, to get another shot. Yeah. So, yeah, Captain A's lineup is built against aggro. All of his decks are calling his opponent. His Chinese opponent, yeah, you got very dominant, very successful with your aggro decks last time. Try me. <laughs> so, um, looking at tank tanks matchup, uh, lineup, of course, they are bringing uh, this huge German Italy control deck, mm -hmm. what will shred through, through any Captain A decks. And, uh, looking or guessing the bands i feel like captain a really needs to be worried about this control deck of tank tank and ban this and yeah after that facing the legion and the air deck and if if captain a is performing very well i guess he can beat the, uh the brit deck every time well let's take a look at the bands because we have them ready and here we see them. Tang Tang has his USA deck removed and Captain A has his Britain deck removed. So I feel like, you know, Tang Tang basically targeting that more uh, controlly, more uh, pin heavy version of the discard deck there from Captain A. Yeah. And uh, Captain. Uh, Captain is sorry. not banning the, the German Italy control deck. I'm. I'm. Well, I'm happy to see the German Italy control deck. It's fun to see a good control matchup. What we are going to see very soon. So, well, I mean, I get it. The, the Legion deck has a lot of card draw and is, is not that aggressive, of course. But I really don't see Captain A winning against this control deck. He, he really needs to win against Brit Air. Yeah. That's going to be an interesting one to see for sure. Um, and I mean, I, I, I agree. I think it's a, a slightly weird ban because we know from experience that um, this uh, US Legion's deck, I mean, it, it even though it kind of does play well into the late game, it is kind of a mid-range deck and you can really tackle it in the mid game and slow it down and make it struggle um, in the late game. So I'm a little bit curious uh, for, as to why he decided to go for that ban instead of getting rid of that, like you talked about, heavy, heavy control deck from the German Italy side. And you know what that means as well? What? That means that we can we could see the King Tiger. Yeah, actually, you're right. We could see the King Tiger. Because I'm, I'm excited. Captain A stacks are, are not really in the position to, to finish the game before Tang Tang is able to play the King Tiger. Exactly. Well, it is time. We are into game number one of the May Officer Club Championship, and it is going to be Germany against Germany. 
And I feel like it's been a while since we've had a really, really powerful uh, control matchup here in the OCC. So I am excited for this one. And Captain A going first here and immediately finding the U16 off of turn one also has the Nash up in there. So um, could potentially find a good way to start snowballing in the credit department there. In the credit department here, but the credit department is not really necessary. I, I feel like Captain A going first is very bad for him. Because in this control deck, both players are not having a lot of card draw. And having, having actually like uh, two more options is very beneficial for Tank Tank here. This makes it even harder for Captain A to, yeah, to come into this, this match. As you see the hand of Tang Tang, he's having the King Tiger, the Yak Bomber, Wolf Pack. There's so many options and Captain A is not having a lot of card draw. Can you can you explain to me why did Tang Tang not drop the Arado last turn? He would have been able to draw an order with it, um, but he opted to keep it in hand. Was it potentially to deny uh, a Flampanzer or Maybe. <laughs> I think so, but I am not 100% sure as well. My best guess is that he was waiting for turn 3 to drop the 998th Fox Grenadier, getting buffed. Yeah. Plus 2, plus 2. As this forces Captain A here to use the V1 Flying Bomb to get rid of it, because it's very dangerous. But this feels so bad for Captain A because in this control matchup you don't want to <laughs> there's a second one oh. now he's able to trade again that Oof. that's huge yeah that uh, was massive because in, in this control matchup you really want to get the U-boat to, to destroy a unit and get rid of two cards Maybe even the Uran project to to get a lot of value, not trading one for one. It's it's not meant to be like that. No, and Captain A kind of already suffering a little bit there. I mean, uh... a little bit. <laughs> He's only having one card left, and no card rot. While while Tang Tang is having six card at his hand. Tink Included King Tiger, Ledechima, Yak Bomber, Comet, it's looking horrible. Captain A is really looking for for desperate top decks now. Let's see, what is Captain A bringing here in terms of draw? Um, not a ton. I mean, he's he's bringing two Lendlies, um, but apart from that, not a ton of draw in the deck. No Enigma that would help him kind of claw back um rapidly here but no he, he needs to find land lease you, you can't really play enigma in this kind of deck ollie uh because you have a lot of discard and you want to get rid of your opponent's cards yeah exactly this is not uh synergizing with enigma but if you don't find your land leases here in this scenario it's looking uh, it's looking really hard Tang Tang has a lot of options. Currently looking at the Reich Research. I mean, he could get for the Wii One Flying Bomb and get just rid of the board, the front line. As I mentioned, usually in the control matchup, you want to get like better options, but there's no need for better options because Captain A does not have options. Yeah, and I mean, now if you're Captain A, I wonder if you just if you're just looking to basically empty your hand here um, every turn because you know that there's a lot of potential discard coming in here from Tang Tang. There's a lot of potential coming discard in, but it's at this part, at this point you had to play both or nothing, and yeah. he played nothing, so. The sudden strike is getting removed. This is awesome for Captain A. Uh, keeping his rough lightning for now. Wolfpack only hitting root out the enemy. This is not very ideal. Um, I think now, everything else would be better. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now Tank Tank starting to push damage with the Comet. 
um, opting to also just keep his hand size up because he has nothing to use any of his deployment effects on, right? Uh, can't target anything from Ladachima, and uh, the Jag Bomber wouldn't have targeted any way I anything either. Now, from the deep, I wonder if Tang Tang is going to check for this or if he's going to get baited into dropping a Ladechima here. Um, Ladechima or Comet, that would be crucial. As the best way would be sacrificing the Arado into the rough and playing the second Arado. Oh, he got the Comet. This feels good for Captain A. Ah, M MI5. This is giving Captain A another option. Ooh, and Fog of War off the top there. I think it's a good play here. I mean, he's going to be know. blocking a couple of draws. Yes, but Arado is drawing. Arado is drawing risk deployment effect if he's removing it. Yeah, I mean, but he's, it's, it's only drawing one, right? Yeah. And it's going to be two turns of drawing Arados. Maybe if he pulls a Lend Lease, it gives him a, a chance to kind of come back in the game. And Captain A knows there's a second Arado sitting in hand, so he, he could just use use it because uh, Tang Tang is able to draw another order anyway. And and again, like we talked about, right? Um, what if there's another annihilation? Um, what if there's anything? Oh, oh sky, burns. sky burns. <laughs> Into Admiral Hipper. Tang Tang now is able to get back his own Hipper, uh, his own Ar Arado, Hipper it uh, to, to prevent card draw or just dropping the Yacht Bomber. Uh, this is m way more aggressive and probably better. Now Captain A needs to do something or will face six damage next turn. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> the Jack Bomber is something you do not want a Fog of War, right? Nee, you don't want him no, to no. trust two copies of that. Yeah, playing Fog of War onto the Arado probably would have been a better choice earlier. But I mean, this is like, this is one of the difficulties, right? Um, if you fall behind, especially in this mirror matchup where both have cards that manipulate the other's hand, um, that are able to prevent draws, but he goes for the Fog of War on the Jag Bomber. Very, very interesting, and that smells yeah, to me like time. desperation, right? It saves him five damage. Sure, it gives his opponent another Yak Bomber, but Captain A really, really needs to do something now. Yeah, now. But <laughs> Tang Tang able to hipper his own Arado, and now Captain A is not even drawing a single card, still having nothing, and there's a second Yak Bomber. So... King Tiger! Yes, it's we been do played. He's a king tiger. It has been played. <laughs> and Leopold. Oh, but he surrenders. Why didn't he play to Leopold? <laughs> I mean, he knows that Tang Tang has answers, but I would have wanted to see the king yeah. tiger get some bounce. You know. Yeah, I, I wanted to see this too, but let's be honest. Captain A does not have the possibilities to deal with Tang Tang at this stage of the game. No, he does not. That is absolutely true. All right. We are now heading on into game number two. And what a beautiful, beautiful card back here from Tang Tang. Yeah, it's it's really lovely. This is the um, highest level card back for Britain. How many levels are this again? 350. 350 level played with Britons, and then you're getting this Air Force card back. It's it's really cool. Tang Tang already has a United We Stand. This is a very scary card to have turn two. But Captain A didn't play a single unit because he did not have to. Even the mobile defense, you, you really want to play them when there's stuff on the field. You don't want just to play them aggressively because they run out of time and getting getting destroyed. Exactly. Um, I wonder if we're going to see the 52k come out here, uh, especially with another one drawn. No, opting instead to play more on curve and just dropping the first rifles. 
I, yeah. I really like that. The first rifles are bringing so much value onto the field. But there's a uh, there's a second pair of C in the hand here from Tang Tang, which basically allows him to turn either one of those bombers into a one hit kill, um, if he so chooses. Yeah, and... of course. But uh, Tang Tang is not choosing this. Tang Tang is going aggressive. Well, of course this makes sense. Captain A needs to move the first rifles forward and then Tang Tang has the option to play the second parachute and just killing it, making Captain A losing one credit in the progress. But the turn that Tang Tang now has, I mean, he's got the United We Stand to take out the 52K in the back line. He can drop the second pair of C and then take out the first rifles in the front line, which is going to drop a second rifles. And that is just an extremely powerful opener if he chooses to go that direction. I mean, he could have, of course, as well, just um, uh, buff up that bomber even further and make it just a pure 5-7 if you wanted to. But opting to go for the second pair of C play, pushing that infantry unit back into the support line as well. And now yeah, this looks looking, horrible. Yeah, they're looking pretty bad. Um, also, look at the hand of Tang Tang, right? He's got the Monty, he's got the shelling, he has everything he needs to slow down the advance of, of anything that might come out of Captain A's hand here. And with an established 3 5 bomber on the field, that could spell the end of the game extremely quickly here. Yeah, Cap Captain A now needs to flood the board like with mobile defense and the C Moventi. But not knowing there is Monty and Shelling, this really hurts. Yeah. Like Monty and Shelling is pinning the mobile defense tanks in the back line, causing them to getting destroyed after the next turn of Captain A. Ah, uh, that's... You hate to see it. You hate to see it. Because, I mean, I we, we both know what Captain A was thinking there. He's like, I can put three tanks on board. I have a Mare Nostrum. I, I probably have a way to, to start getting some of this health back. But the shelling, just right. saying, nope. Um, can, can you still play Mare Nostrum onto your opponent? Uh, yes. Yes. No, yes. no, no. No. Uh, I don't think you can. Uh, what are you? What are you thinking? Bad. Are you thinking about playing Mary Nostrum and then playing Lion for a day yes. to take out the? I was thinking about that to get rid of the, the yeah he tried. It's not possible to get rid of the the effect of the second parachute. Yeah, I mean now now I think you really need to to think right. Like, am I able to red banner into anything? Um. Probably 52k and red banner onto one of those tanks who are getting destroyed anyway. And that's the first rifles. This is lovely. Yeah, um, I mean, but it's the Monty. Monty and Sexton. Oh, it's so hard to play against so many pins. Tang Tang is just playing Monty, drawing another card, able to. Gets the Greyhound. I mean, that, yeah. that second pair of C takes out the second rifles. Um, and Greyhound he pushes... into the front line. Oh my god, this is so and another powerful. And Greyhound into the front line. This is so powerful. That's going to be five damage to face if he so chooses. But it's not over yet because uh, this think... Bomber is at four now. Next so... at five. So this is a lot of damage, sure, but Lion for a day can now kill the yeah. bomber and this is necessary i mean this is definitely necessary um but i mean there's also there's also a line of play there for tank tank that's a little bit less greedy if he just doesn't push that second um greyhound up and just procs the ultra that means that his bomber would have been Ooh. completely protected captain a could have played around ultra this is open deck list yeah that's true right how much damage is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is lethal. One turn before Captain A would be able to get back with Mary Nostrum, it's exactly lethal. Tang Tang plays this really, really professional, getting as much damage as, as possible 
and closing out the game. Of course, it looked very, very dom dominant from Tang Tang, but Captain A was very slow, uh, was very close to, to a comeback here, I feel like. Yeah. Um... Any mistake from Tang Tang would have been crucial. I mean, I, I feel like I feel like Tang Tang got everything that he wanted there um, in both games, right? He just he just had sure. extremely good cards. Well, Captain A didn't really find um, everything that he wanted, right? I mean, no A forty fifth for him to get some of that early healing. Um, that United we stand coming in to take out the first fifty two K was was also crucial because that could have potentially snowballed um, in in Captain A's direction. So. Yeah, a, a game that was probably a lot closer than it looked like. Um, it definitely looked like a blowout, but I think you're correct. I mean, what does that turn look like if if Captain Eight gets one turn more? Right, he's he's able to put uh, a Marinostrum onto two units. He's able to heal up by at least like eight health. Um, take out some of that uh, uh, frontline 11, buffs. Eleven health. This yeah. would be with the same Ivante against Greyhound double attack. Oh yeah, uh, double, double attack. Damage. That's true. Oh man, um, it, it unfortunately. Was, yeah, and it, this was only because of the top deck of Gladiator being able to get exactly the the damage Tang Tang needed. Yeah, Actually, yeah, it, it looked like a blowout. Uh, I think non-player made a huge mistake or, or even small mistakes, but every single mistake would have changed the outcome. Could have changed the outcome of this game. All right, let's take a look at the bracket then after our uh, quarterfinals here between Tang Tang and Captain A has concluded. That means Tang Tang is going to move on into the semifinals off stream. Evergarden lost 2-0 against Tiger. So Tiger securing himself a spot in the semifinals as well. He's going to be taking on the winner of Noen 5 versus Artemisia. But up next on the stream, we have J King 7 taking on Cappuccino. And to bring us through that, we'll pass it over to Spoos and Bubbles. Yeah, Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ollie and Darkness. How you doing, Spoos? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm, I'm doing well. I'm looking forward to the uh, the Soviet mirror match that's incoming. You know, it's inevitable. Um, it's going to be a, a slow golden game. Usually we get the quick ones uh, and the eight, they get the slow ones, but today it seems to have been switched around on us. Um, but no, I'm doing really, really well. I'm looking forward to the, the great deal of cards we have left. Um, I'm just looking forward to the games. Yeah, me too. Um, also looking forward to Cappuccino stacks. Um... We might take a look at them right now. Um, some really interesting stuff coming in. We already have this one, the first one, um, presented in the in the in the war room. Um, maybe you can give us a short um, go through through this again. Yeah, so it's a Soviet OTK deck. It uses cards like Ura, along with buffing up their units with things like Stamfast and. Uh... Just to, just to blow through, and then you also have this uh, Great Patriotic War to, to set the HP low. So you go Great Patriotic War, you go Stand Fast, and then you go for the Bolts of the Ranks, and you just make this huge unit and smash through to Lethal with the Ura. Um, and there are a couple other ways you can do this. You sort of you can replace the OT34 with maybe one of your guards. The uh, the Great Patriotic War isn't always necessary. There's a few different ways it operates. I, I'm very interested to see how consistent it's going to be. Whether Cappuccino is going to need to high roll to win with this, or whether they can win when it's you know not such a good mulligan and they're getting rushed in the early game. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting deck. I'm looking forward to see how it operates. We've seen similar things played before on Ladder when uh, when Ura first came out, um, but we've not seen anything like this in the competitive scene before. And then their next deck is a Germany Italy deck. So you know it's nothing too crazy. German Italy control. It's pretty good against a lot of the meta decks. It, this deck has, I think, been a staple of control for a long time in cards. It, it's possibly one of the most, uh, I don't know, consistent control decks in recent history. You've got the Man Nostrum to heal up, you've got really strong target removal, and then you have, you know, ways of dealing with aggro, things like Flam Panzer and Sudden Strike. And then against control, you have cards like Leopold. And, you know, the Tiger IE was very common, but I believe that started to be phased out now. It's just a very consistent overall well-rounded deck. Uh, anything to add, Swiss? Yeah, it looks like the Tiger 1E just got replaced by the King Tiger, right? Mm-hmm. 
So we also see the King Tiger in, in this deck. So two lists with King Tiger. Very interesting. And yeah, we, we saw it in the in the first match here from Captain A versus Tang Tang. King Tiger was uh, forced uh, the opponent uh, into a surrender. I'm not sure why Captain A surrendered there with the Leopold. So there was still a slight chance. But I think King Tiger was just too impressive that he was thinking, oh no, I'm never killing this one. I'm out. Bye bye. So yeah, cool to see that one card, uh, to that, see that card in... in um, competitive play. And then yeah. the next deck is a Britain USA deck, correct? Yes. So, do you want to take us through a little bit about this deck? Yeah, it's just the usual. Um, we already saw it in the in the first match here, Tank Tank versus Captain A. The Brit Air deck, um, very strong with these cheap early units, and then you have cards like Close Air Support and the Gladiator to give your early small planes more attack and make them a really really um frightening unit for your opponent and then you have cards like landlies because you have a lot of cheap cards landlies can help you a lot to refill your hand and give you more options and then the cards like monty and Chelling, as we saw in the first match they can be so annoying when you cannot really reach the bombers and the fighters in the support line and then additionally your opponent is just pinning your units and you are just sitting there and and be really frustrating because you, you can't do anything so yeah we all know that Brit US air deck, and I think it is something you should consider banning, but not if you're J King, because J King is bringing some control lists. So, could you lead us to the first deck from J King here? Now, you may think it's not changed at all, and you would be <laughs> forgiven for that, but J King is also bringing his own Brit air deck. Um, again, you know, we, we've seen this deck a lot. I. I I do find it quite humorous that, you know, the name changes and all of this change, but the deck itself, <laughs> you'd be forgiven for thinking we hadn't skipped forward yet. But no, J-King also bringing a Brit Air deck, very similar to what we've seen before, that identical, and the, the double mobilizers with the double Lend Lee makes it uh, very, very easy for this deck to find its OTK, but we're not going to spend too long on this one. Um, so the next deck is a USA Germany deck. Now, this is a, a mid-range frontline deck. This is similar to the USA Poland deck, but this one was about, in fact, the original one. Um, there was a, a Japan ally one for a little bit, but this was the, the main sort of one that took the game by storm. It, it's just a really powerful and consistent deck. We do see the California, which obviously does operate a little bit different now, but it still pretty much acts as the same unit. It's just a lot weaker to removal now. Um, anything which stands out to you here, Spooz, or is this just what we've seen before? I don't know. I think we've we haven't seen that deck in a while. It it disappeared out of the competitive scene, but good to see it back. Um, and I'm excited to see if, how it performs um, against Cappuccino's decks today. And then yeah. the next deck is the Soviet Japan one. Now, you played this game before I did, Spooz. I was <laughs> fortunate enough to see the Soviet Japan deck in action. But obviously, are you playing it for a little bit longer? Do you want to take me back to when this uh, deck was meta? Some of the people in chat may not remember, but this deck used to be the prime deck in card. Yeah, especially when the old Night Witches was in there, in the in the way that they just gave you cards back into your deck, and then you had Empire of the Sun. I think most of the players played two Empire of the Sun in the deck, even just to empty your hand even faster or your deck even faster. And then you could go into infinite night witches. So it was very popular at a time around and J King was really, really good with this. And I think this was the time when Darkness had this insane unlimited game with Ravs Ken where both players just stalled each other and could not really win. Um yeah, J King just adjusted a little bit as you can see. No not really any Empire of the Suns in this. But a lot of guards on Japanese sides and a lot of guards on Soviet side. Uh, I think he really prepared against the Hummer deck with this because this deck might struggle against guards and yeah, this should be the perfect answer for that. Also, a lot of control tools like the Hammer just to get rid of these tanks. I think it might struggle a little bit against Brit Air, but yeah, we have one ban here in the first round. So just ban Brit Air and then win against the other matchups. So I'm um, yeah, 
unfortunately, Cappuccinos only bring a bit air as an aggressive deck. Then we have that Stand Fast Bolster deck and the King Tiger deck. So I'm not sure what, what J King should ban there from Cappuccino. What do you think? I mean, he does have the 52k in his Soviet deck, which is a little bit of a, an anti Brider tool. And he does have the Scorched Earth. Um, while I think Brider is probably the scariest of the, the three decks from Cappuccino, it's not unwinnable for this Soviet deck. I just feel like, you know, this potential to draw and then lethal you out of nowhere is so terrifying that you almost want to ban it even when you've got counters to it just because of this deck's ability to kill you out of nowhere. Yeah, absolutely agree. I think I read in, in some of our Discord channels that, that Jaking was just confused by this deck and, and thought, oh, I, I'm probably just going to ban this. And I think he's not in the in the worst spot to to ban this one because yeah as you said it can just pop off so quickly with double urar and then it bolts the stand fast combo you better ban this i mean there's also there's an argument to banning this germany italy deck because j king very much posted himself to be able to beat other aggro decks um mm -hmm. that this control deck could potentially be an issue especially if a king tiger gets put into the support line and then like a leopold comes out in the late game you can't partisans the Leopold because of that King Tiger. However, on the flip side, if you can uh, partisans that Leopold, you can now red banner it to make a uh, a King Tiger of your own. Yeah, really cool synergy that we can now um, partisans a, a Leopold and get a King Tiger on our own. Really cool um, that they added a 12k German card. Um, so what do you think on the other way? What is um, Cappuccino going to ban for J King? I mean, if I was Cappuccino, I'd ban J King Soviets just because it's what he's known for. You know, Soviets are a very scary thing when it's in J King's hand. Um, but I also think there's logic to, to banning the Brit Air deck. But to be honest, all three of these decks are quite scary. And no matter what you ban, you're still going to be having an uphill struggle because J King's just got three very solid decks. Yeah, I think it's, it's hard for both players to decide which deck to ban. And I'm excited to see um, for which decks they are going for. And I think the bans are coming in in one second here. So Cappuccino getting his German Italy control deck banned. So we are not seeing any King Tiger action in this match. And Jiking, Jiking is getting his Brit deck banned. So no Brit US air deck for J King. I also realized that J King played evasive action in his Brit air list. Um, very interesting. This is probably to protect against Flam Panzers, but. Yeah, we're not going to see that deck. So, seeing the bands here, which player is picking which deck first? I think we'll probably see Cappuccino take the Brit Air deck because it's just such a reliable deck. But I'd really like to see this Soviet deck come out, you know, in full confidence. Oh, really? I also want to see this in action. And then I do expect we'll see Jaking bring his Soviet deck just because he's so comfortable with the Soviets. Um, but it, it's a sort of very difficult situation with picking these first decks because Cappuccino's decks, they operate so separately and so differently that J King sort of, he doesn't know what sort of style he's going to be up against. So now we see Cappuccino bringing the Soviet OTK deck. Oh, nice, 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 nice. J -King, I, I really love those kind of decks, honestly. Yeah, J King going for this USA mid range. Not the greatest start so far for him. Let's see what he can. Find. You're probably looking for Red Devil, 32nd, right? Ooh. Oh, God. Ooh, finding none of them. And but no also units Cappuccino's united hand. we stand. Cappuccino does have the Ura. Does have some card draw. It's not the ideal start, but due to the slow start in Jaking's hand, it should even out. Yeah, by the sword could be oh, really an Jake. MVP here, right? Just like not this... finding what he needs. This 35T is going to come down, but it's going to be instantly UWS. And this is just like a golden start here for Cappuccino. Has the Irregulars as well. And JK taking the aggro out of aggressive. You know, taking the aggressive out of aggro. <laughs> However, it, it's certainly far from GG. This, this can still come back. Cappuccino going for the ramp. Because I'll get two damage in when I can. J King deciding does he want to kill his own unit or take the front line? Goes for the front line. Because there is the potential there to UWS it. Oh, but Cappuccino able to, to ramp once again if they so desire. 
considering the guards as well. Jakin will be forced to Howcat to trade, assuming it's... No, it's not Awoken. Yeah, how's Jakin ever getting rid of this? Half track for now. Half track for now? Yeah. Yeah, it really However, has to However, you then have to float the 2k. You can put down a Sherman, wait for this to move to the front line, and then Sherman UWS trade. Maybe a better line. Just drop the Sherman, be patient. Now, if Cappuccino pushes this up, you trade and do your UWS, get a little bit of ramp going. And if Cappuccino doesn't move up, you can then go for the half track. I just don't see what this half track does at the moment. It's not like it's delaying a rush from Cappuccino because Cappuccino isn't the rush deck. Yeah, that's exactly what J King is considering here. So. Probably going for the Sherman line instead. He has another one in hand, and he has an almost full hand. So he's not yeah. fully relying on these Shermans right now. Oh, but there's the hammer. Oh, God, these top decks. J King still will be able to trade, but Cappuccino choosing to sit back. J King, he's able to half track, play the combat engineers, and take the front line. You can also just combat engineers, we can do it. There's quite a few different options here. Goes for the half track. Yeah, combat Jacking engineers, Sherman. Is only having one half track in the deck. So that was his only bounce at this point. Now, Cappuccino has a few decisions. Hammer may be super useful here. Now, if we see the hammer come down and then these irregulars go into the front line, it is going to be a real problem for Jaken. We no, can Jaking's see by the sword two. first. Two half track. I feel like if you're Cappuccino here, you're just finding your combo pieces, right? You're delaying Jaking as much as you can and finding your combo pieces. They're going to go for the mobilization. Ooh, found the stand oh, fast. I feel like you have to hammer this Sherman, right? If you can take away the front line from this USA deck, it's just so impactful. And then once these irregulars are in the front line, if they survived in the front line, you could then uh, buff them up as well. Oh, add another hurrah. Oh, close to the ODK oh, already. Cappuccino is taking their time and how they play this, right? They're being very defensive. I, I feel like I prefer to see them being a little bit more proactive because if you hammer this Sherman, you get irregulars into the front line and they don't die. You can then have a stand fast at irregulars in the front line, which is just absolutely brutal for Jaking to have to try and deal with. So how's the combo with the 17s working? You could 17s, stand fast, bolster, ura. how much credits is this? That's 10, a 13, lot. You, 16, yeah, that's probably yeah. a lot of it. You want to do it on one of the units that's ready on the board, ideally. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can even hit first with one of your units, so you, you can cast them in such a way that you can hit with a unit to get uh, one of Jakings down to one. So Cappuccino would trade a little bit just to get one of Jakings units low, and then you can go for the full damage. Now, I think I'd like to see double hammer, yeah. drop the engineers, trade them into the front line with your, uh, with your unit. That's probably what we're going to see here. And I think you trade with the irregulars, and then you leave these other guys alive. You leave the, uh, the two free alive, because you can trade away your own irregulars, and it'll do the free damage. They're so annoying, actually. When you, you don't see them that often on ladder, but when you face them, I, I feel they are really annoying with their three damage when they are getting killed. Cappuccino still yeah. holding back the hammers. I wonder if this is for this California in particular, or is there any other reason you'd hold back the hammers for this long? Maybe, like, if you have the Sherman now, for example, this Sherman is sitting at 7 HP, and if you would hammer it, it would go, go down to 1 HP. And yeah. if you have then a unit and play your Ura combo, it's just minus one damage. That, is, that is very true. So actually, you want to have your opponent to have units in the front line. So you don't want to get rid of them. But on the other hand, I mean, J King is kind of forced to go to the front line, otherwise, he cannot win. I mean, it does also answer this California perfectly, right? California comes out, even if you play, we can do it to buff it up. You just hammer it and it dies. 
Yeah, also good good um, argument to, to keep the hammers back here, just for the Californians. JK, starting to trade into these guards. You do have to be careful though, if you're Capuchin. You only have 12 credit slots, so you can't really blitz out lethal. Ooh. Oh, the bolster schmolster. The bolster. Ten. Not there but yet. They don't have the credits yet, so they just need to buy some time. Actually, the 17th regiment is really good for this OTK, right? It has smoke screen, it has blitz, so it has yeah. a lot of potential ways to just blitz out damage or to just hide under the smoke screen and then blitz out. Goes for the draw. Finds a second Whoa. stand fast. <laughs> oh god. Stand fast, stand fast, bolster. That is plus 20, plus 20. However, you don't have space for the Ura then, right? Not yet. You need one more credit slot. You need to be at 13, not at 12. Oh, God. But do you need to be maxed out in credit slots? You can go one stand fast, one bolster. That's seven. No, it's not enough. Not enough damage. It's just plus 10, plus 10, I guess. And they, they're just going to need to make plus sure... 15, is it? They don't get killed on the board here. I feel like... Uh, I feel like you have to start using these cards. You can pop down the hammer. And you can bolster this unit right now, or potentially you play one of your stand fast and, and hope that Jaking doesn't have the second bounce because you can put down the, the stand fast in advance. Oh, oh, but the great patriotic war! The third bolster. You play the bolster, and then next turn, this great patriotic war is going to go in for lethal. But he wakes it up. Waking it up gives Jaking the opportunity to trade into it. Yeah, with double short, uh, double Hellcat, and he's having double, double Hellcat, Hellcat and trade into it, or combat engineers run up this Sherman trade that leaves you with five credits left over, and then you drop this first day first and finish it off. Possibly a fatal mistake there from Cappuccino waking up the unit. Now, or just the United we stand, yeah. Goes oh. for the whirlwind. Has yeah, plenty of time, but... Yeah, Cappuccino still has the OT-34. I just, I feel like waking up your unit may yeah. have been a mistake when you had that on top of your deck. Yeah, you should have just played the stand fast, right? Or yeah. the bolster, any of these. Yeah, don't you, you it buff up. it, but you keep it asleep. You've got lots of HP, you don't need to fight for the front line. And I mean, Jaking isn't running Blitzkrieg, and, and it's an open deck list, so you're aware of that. Um, I would like to point out, J King's deck is almost entirely gold cards. Yeah, that's also what the deck is named, right? Yeah, yeah, almost, almost gold full card. gold. I feel like they could have named it Fool's Gold, and that would have been a nice little pun. <laughs> oh man, Cappuccino, what was that? Not I mean, finding any more units here. Not over yet, you can go for the Scotch Turf. Just... Feels like, you know, when you're in these OTK decks, you need to be playing this perfectly. Armor Train could potentially go for the OTK with the light infantry that spawns out of the Armor Train. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. Scorch Earth. So you need to stand fast. Do you stand fast your train here? I think you should Scorch Earth first, because now he has minus one operation cost on the, on the tank. And you want to have... Five oh, and not four. Jaking. Oh god. I feel like you. Tr why? Why would you hammer the California over hammering the uh, the Howcat when you know the Howcat's gonna one shot your train and the California won't? I don't know honestly. And no more units. Oh, this is getting really, really rough. But I think the reason would be with California. You cannot really do the, the OTK. No, like but there it's... is a, a Werble when still there. That's true. So only two OT34 left for the OTK now. 
But J King, he's got lethal. He's got it all ready to go. Even if you set yourself up to 12 HP, this Hellcat is going to uh, blitz out. And yeah, what can Cappuccino find here? The battery is a good chance battery to. Battery will, will keep you alive. Not really. Yeah, yeah, you battery kill one of these. And then you play. The Great okay. Patriotic War. Let's see. Mm -hmm. And then you need to top deck lethal. But how? There's no blitz unit left. Did they, did they only run the war? You, I think you played two seven. Uh, played two seventeen so far. No, one got bounced. Oh, it was the it was the bounce, first one. Yeah. But still. So you have to top deck a seventeenth. <laughs> yeah, but. Oof. J King. Yeah, that was a big mistake there, I guess. Just should have kept it on the smoke screen. I think that would have been an easy win. I but... completely agree. I mean, J King didn't have any bounce in hand. You've seen one of the half tracks come out already, so you've got a good idea that the second one's not going to be anywhere near. Um, I, You know, there's only two of them in the deck, right? Uh, yes. I, I, Yeah, I feel like it was a, a pretty big error on, on J King's part. No, on Cappuccino's part. On Cappuccino's part, yeah. sorry. Yeah. So, will Cappuccino stick with the uh, Soviet deck? No. Look like they switched to Red Air now to equal the score here, hopefully, for them. J King forced to play his Soviet control deck now. Double spiring, ooh. And Scorchers. <laughs> That's certainly a uh, a control de uh, hand right there. Oh, and the hammer. Uh oh. Hammer not going to be so useful against Britta. J King. Really not hoping for the German research. Yeah. yeah. And Cappuccino with a quite good starting hand here with double swordfish. However, J King he can go for the scorched earth, can go for the spire. Ah, oh, another Brit one. I always get the US one out of this. I think I played a spiring deck this week, and I think out of eight times, I got six US researchers. I don't know. I think the the Brit one, one of the worst ones here. German one would be the nuts for sure. The US one, just to give you HQ smoke screen and buy you some time, give you an extra credit slot. So, I mean, the, the Brit one's best when you're playing a TK decks because you can get this rubber or you can get Psycho and Hill. When you're playing just a standard control deck, I think, yeah, the Britain is, the British one is possibly the worst. Especially when facing an aggressive deck like yeah. Cappuccino is playing and you want to get rid of these units early and the radar is not helping you with that, synthetic rubber not really, and the rest is just too expensive to research into it before your opponent is killing you. But oh, Cappuccino, <laughs> they set themselves for a beautiful Scorch Dirt from JK. And that will hurt a lot, I can tell you. Do you go for the Yak or the Engineer? Obviously, the Yak is a fighter, but the Engineer does provide more healing, which is which is pretty darn important here. Yeah, but you don't get any healing when you don't have units on board. 52k is one of them. Look at that Scorched Earth. Oh. And this is what I mean. This card just completely shuts down aggressive deck. And now... Cappuccino is going to have to spend four credits moving a swordfish to the front line. And their, their support line is still completely clogged. JK, yeah. considering going for the Yak and the 52k, which is uh, going to be protected by the Yak. But I don't think you target, uh, target the front line one. Yeah, target the front line one because that support line is clogged up. Don't, no, no, front line, front line. Yeah, I really want to do front line. Because whenever Cappuccino wants to deploy units now, he has to move no! to the units out of the front line first. Or of the support line. He killed the one in the support line. Maybe he's thinking about this cast, but So what? Let him let uh let them cast one of these swordfish. I feel like J King shouldn't be worried about the the uh, cast. Yuck. Oh, yeah, that, that slows down so. Cappuccino so much, right? The yeah. Scorched Earth. And in such a situation, that was like the perfect situation. A lot of one attack units, they don't offer that much damage, but you, they just have four operation costs to, to make them do anything. 
Oui. Oh. De Tomir. Yeah, Steve, as uh, as it's known by the community. Steve. Yeah, it's Steve. <laughs> Never heard of that. Why Steve? Have you not? I don't know why. I just know that it is. <laughs> Completely random. I think they just decided to give the guy a name. Steve. Is that a common Soviet name? Steve? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely have no explanation why. I've just heard it over and over again. I think Dynamo ask? started it. You see, Cappuccino's board state is still pretty scary from them. Jaking is going to have to find ways to deal with this pretty proactive. This Brit Air deck, it, it's so scary. Yeah, but these plus three operation costs there on the Swordfish are still hurting in like clearing Jaking's support line. Baking's hand is not looking great, honestly. These raiders offer some healing here and some draw. But not help J King dealing with the board. Zagi getting rid of finest hour. That was a good one. Would have probably preferred the land lease there. Yeah. What to do? That's the downside of the Bryansky regulars. Cannot really help you getting rid of stuff in the front lane when this stuff is not having a lot of attack. Ooh, finds a Sendai regiment. Taking developing a nice wall here, but this wall is not helping against bombers. You would need the the yuck right now and not not that early. It was kind of forced. Oh, and another one. Another scorched earth. But do you ever play it here at this board? I I maybe. think maybe you do. It still affects free units. Can get rid of one Greyhound, attacking with the Bryansky regulars. Well, you, can, you can hammer the other one as well. Jake can though not have his options. Yes. Kind of like to see this hammer come out. Yeah, I mean at this point. I mean, I guess it also kills the Paracy. Yeah. Uh, potentially holding it for them. Yeah, and also this god helps you to cycle through your deck, helps you to find more answers. While this hammer is not offering you a lot, then just getting rid of the Greyhound. And this would be the perfect spot for another Scorched Earth, isn't it? Yeah, I think this is as good as you're going to get. Do we attack with the 845th first? I, I would. You attack, you play the Scorched Earth, and then you put down your gun. So what would be what could be a reason that J King did not attack with the 845th first? He wants to let them on board to get more healing out of them. I don't know. Would not die. Oh, but what a top tech from J King. It also offer him plus four healing on his side. Oh no, yeah. even more. You can also do you hammer one of your own guards first instead of go for the trick. You could gam uh, hammer one to get a little bit extra healing. Yeah, I mean, it's not really needed at this point. I Dude, think you should better keep that. it for the piracy. Beautiful. 31. <laughs> <laughs> but this Spitfire. I imagine we'll see the Spitfire come down. 
Yeah, but there's a Sendai Regiment waiting. Yeah, yeah. I think Cappuccino not in the greatest spot here at the moment. Needs to find better tools. Oh, but look, the evasive action. Put down the Spitfire and the evasive action. Protects it from the Sendai. And you follow up with the cast next turn. And oh, this could that be huge. Here. Oh, but partisans too. Do you pop the partisans now? You could hit face for eight. Jaking, just thinking to myself, if only that Spitfire had ambush. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, but the evasive! My God, evasive actually actually paying out. I thought Jakey would be the only one who had it in his deck, but turns out Cappuccino also having it. Yeah, one copy evasive action. That's all you need in an open deck format. Ah, oh, double close air support. I was just playing one. Holding the second one back. Yeah, there we see the strength of Bredair here. For the demonstration. But this party sense could be huge. Killing two of Cappuccino's units, sending that Spitfire back to the hand. It's a shame you're not able to finish off your own Spitfire. Yeah. It would have been the perfect. Perfect trade there if the Swordfish would have been a gladiator. And these hammers. <laughs> Probably keeping them for the piracy, but not seeing a piracy here. Oh my lord. This draw for Cappuccino just completely refilling their hand whenever they feel like it. They can need some really good stuff out of the parade there. That's, That's not good. bad. Yeah. Absolutely not. But yeah, Cappuccino's hand. Holy moly. Oh <laughs> oh so my much Lord. draw. <laughs> Found another mobilization. How much draw is this deck having? Like it feels like half of the deck is draw. Well, two mobilizations and two land leases. And you know, convoys. You play your land lease, you find a mobilization. So you play your mobilization and it finds you a land lease. So you play the <laughs> land lease and it finds you a mobilization. And that finds you a convoy. Into a it convoy. It just goes on. Yeah, convoy here, convoy this. Oh, and double empire strikes. Oh my god. Yeah, this deck, I don't know, Brit Air. When this gets out of control, it gets out of control. An amphibious assault for Jaking really not going to be enough. Don't get Jaking. me wrong, it will buy some time, but now the Monty is going to come up from Cappuccino. And I think I think when Monty drops, it will be GG. Jaking really needs the air hammer. Yeah, there's also actually... Triple convoy in the deck. So it's double land lease, double mobilize, uh, mobilization, and triple. And we just have lethal here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nothing Jaking could do with two hammers the whole time. Just not what you want to have against Brit Air. And you know what this means, Spoos? We see the old DK deck again. The Soviet mirror as well. Scorched Earth versus Scorched Earth. Although Scorch Earth for Cappuccino is way better than for Jaking with yeah. the bolster in the deck. So in my opinion, honestly, Cappuccino's having the advantage here. What do you think? Nothing? Um <laughs> I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, some of us, some of us, it takes time for us to think. Yeah, I mean, we had the situation earlier where you just, um, <laughs> let's, no, no, let's that, not talk about that. that. That was a lack of thinking. You know, this is this is thinking. That was a lack of thinking. I'm just thinking. Pretty similar face how expression. Much, 
<laughs> How much can Jay King heal by? And uh, mm. players. Am I crazy here? Has Cappuccino got the Brit deck and not meant to have the Brit deck? Yeah. Probably a wrong pick there. Slight Test confusion it. here. Happens to the best. Looks like the players sorting it out now. So if we go back to the bands and the wins, as you can see, Cappuccino has won with the Brit deck. So they now have to play the Soviet deck. Um, I imagine it was just a misclick because Cappuccino is, you know, a uh, a veteran of the OCC format. So I'd be surprised if they uh, if it was anything other than a misclick. Huh. Which um, we should better get sorted in just a moment. I think so too. So, what do you expect here from from the final match? You so yeah, it's just a it, lot of thinking already into this. So <laughs> let the us The question is, the question is, how much can Jaking heal versus how quickly can Cappuccino find a huge nuke of damage, right? And and I feel like Jaking has the potential to just completely out heal, especially these spy rooms. You get two radars. That's eight, and then you get these uh, these little guys that heal you up. You you can heal up very quick. However. Jaking deciding not to bring Soviet um, Italy as an ally could potentially hinder them. Um, he, he he could find it more difficult to heal up. I also want to keep an eye out for these Takasakis because if that can uh, discard a draw, uh, a key point of of God, I'm really stuttering today. If the Takasaki can get rid of one of Cappuccino's uh, key combo cards, and it could be really important. Um, a, a card to really look out for is this Great Patriotic War, because Jaking's trying to heal, Cappuccino's trying to combo. So if Jaking can get that discarded, it'll be huge, and if Cappuccino can find that in a good time, they may better just bypass all the Jaking's healing and just go for the, the kill. Yeah, that could could play an important role at that Great Patriotic War, absolutely. So Jaking can heal as much as he wants. Whenever this Great Patriotic is coming in, there's always the potential OTK possible. Um, yeah, so... How does J King do all this healing that he might need there? So he has 845th and hammer combination, for example. He has the the one drop that is giving you plus two health whenever a unit dies. Any other cool combos he can do there to heal himself up? Uh, I don't think there's too many crazy ones. You you can obviously red banner your stuff to heal it a little bit when you've got this engineers down. Um, mm. But there's nothing too crazy to look out for. Yeah, that will be an interesting one. I mean, J King probably prepared well against these matchups. Yeah, I, I mean, you prepare yourself for aggro and you think that a lot of the same things are going to apply against OTK. But this great Patriotic War just completely resets this because it's a straight to 12 H, uh, HP on your HQ. It doesn't matter how much you heal and how defensive you are. And Cappuccino, because of Ura, is able to bypass guards. I, I'd put Cappuccino at like a 65% chance to win this purely based on decks. Yeah, I'll go with 66. Just so... But yeah, I, I agree. Cappuccino probably having a slight advantage here. J King really needs to spend his hammers wisely. I think the, the hammer could be the key card here, honestly. Like... Do you, if you're J King, do you play this from the beginning just like a fatigue match here, probably? So, I mean, I Cappuccino's don't feel like really relying on, on having units in the front line from the opponent. If you don't do this, how's he ever winning? Like, if you, you J King has the hammer, he has a naval brigade, a lot of stuff to get rid of these units that want to do the potential OTK. However, I, I do think Cappuccino is does have the advantage when, when just biding time, right? They've got ramp in the deck, so they're able to ramp up. They're able to get themselves to a comfortable position. And then, like you say, J King's not going to want to take the front line. But J King does have to win the game as well. Um, and, and I think I think maybe Cappuccino's deck is just better tailored to these longer, slower games, mainly because of these ramps. Um, if they had some spy rings in here, I think it'd be a little bit different. I, I think Cappuccino would really be looking like they're just going to dominate the game. But I do think, you know, first rifles and armored train are both going to go a long way 
in in creating two minute units for Jaken to deal with because obviously first rifles dies and it creates a, a you know a new unit and then armored train is going to be spitting out lots and lots of light infantry and is you know with this seven defense isn't killable via the hammer it's going to have to be an amphibious assault from Jaking, which he does pack he is bringing the amphibious assault but i think that's a, a card to look out for yeah, I'm really excited how to, how this goes and how both players are going into this match with with which match plan. Um, I think Jaking really has an idea here. We saw Cappuccino doing some mistake earlier, losing the match probably through this mistake. So hopefully they they learned the lesson and do it better this time. Um, just to let the the people watching know what's going on. Um, the players are having some slight connection issues. We should have it solved relatively quickly. Um, I, I don't think it should take too long. These things happen when you run a live event. It's just something that happens in anything live. Um, but we do think it's important to bring these non-pre-recorded and, and make it live because it just adds a, another level of intensity and just makes it feel a little bit more real. So this is one of the downsides we occasionally face. Um, but I think it's for the best. And we hope you uh, bear with us maybe get a cup of tea or a drink, you know, quickly go and use the loo or something. And then I'm sure when you're back, we'll be straight into the game. Absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, both players should be at their PC um, and try to get the match together. Because, yeah, we just saw the match getting started earlier. Cappuccino, unfortunately, picking the wrong deck there. A deck that they recently won with. So, yeah, we could have been in the match if they just picked the correct one. It happens though. We've all done it. I've yeah, done yeah. it. Yeah, sure, uh, sure. The worst was when I was like five or six turns in, and then they pointed out to me that I picked a different deck to what I'd submitted, so I had to forfeit the round. Yeah, <laughs> that's, the worst, that's the worst. That's the worst kind of of deck pick, right? When you have the same nation but only slight variances in in cards in it, and you just realize when you are five six turns into the game and think, oh, it was not the deck I was supposed to pick. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. then. That's it, really, that was really obvious in this case here, but. But no, yeah, it, it does happen. Sometimes you're like, oh, I wish I had hammer in the deck, but I don't run hammer. And then you top deck a hammer and you're like, wait a minute. Wait, <laughs> what what deck am I playing? <laughs> so in the meantime, while we're waiting for the players to get ready, have you, have I already shown you my Tiger one? Look at this. Oh, oh look oh. at that. Well, how, really fun to build did it. How long did it take you to build? Yeah, even the tracks are are working. Look at this. Oh my lord! Really cool. Yeah, we built it. I built it together with my girlfriend. She um, really wanted to do. Uh, originally, I wanted to do it on stream together with the community, um, but yeah, she really wanted to try it out, and so we did it. I, I took three and a half, four hours, so longer than I thought it would take. But yeah, it was was quite cool. A lot of cool. Um, things to explore there, a lot of nice ideas. So really cool. I, uh, I have a I, king I, tiger left. Yeah, you got a king tiger. Yeah. Any, any chance we'll get to see that one, or is that one gonna be? Uh... No, this is not not a build uh, right now. Um, this one I'm going to build definitely on stream. Um, yeah. So we will have king tiger next OCC. Not well, just I, in play, I, but also in real life. <laughs> I am looking forward to the Lego stream. Um, some of you, some of you may remember Chipfield Adam. He did a Lego stream recently. Oh, and there's cool. something there's something very cathartic about watching people build Lego. I mean, it's not it's not the same as building Lego yourself, but I mean, it's a lot cheaper, you know. I I was in the uh, a gift store the other day, um, buying uh, some presents for a coworker's birthday, and they had a Lego section, and you get sucked in so easily. You walk past the Lego section, and you're like, oh my lord, look at all the Lego. Yeah, we had, we, had, we had some um, some lessons in uh, at work just to you know how to how to work agile and stuff like that and we we played with Lego in that and that was just <laughs> it was so much fun. we just had to build tiny things we just got this a little house but it was so much fun yeah you, I think you can't get old enough to play with Lego no, it, it's always such a joy and looks like we have the games up so nice. this is Soviet and this time with the correct decks, cool. J King, gonna scratch the scorched earth. I imagine. Surprised that he kept the uh, the naval brigade, but we'll see how it works out. And that's okay, Cappuccino. Now, before anyone goes, oh, it's a BM. No, 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 that's a genuine apology because they picked the wrong deck. You know, 
So we appreciate that and we forgive you. But J King saying hello as well. It's okay. Good day, comrade. Now, this may be one of the the longer games as a very diplomatic. Yeah, you, you already spoiled be... it here. You 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 were aware of it that Ollie and Darkness got the short ones today, yeah. and we got the more longer matches. But it's also nice. Um, why not? We take that. As long as we're seeing good matches here, and this for sure will be an interesting one. Now, this Amphibious Assault, I think you have to save it for the Armored Train. I don't think you waste it on these. <laughs> Wasted it. <laughs> Wastes it on these. <laughs> oh, why do I say things? I should just sit here in silence. I, what I would have liked to see is two of these, uh, these Zero Sixes just constantly hitting each other forever. <laughs> Zero damage. I deal zero damage to you. No, I deal zero damage to you. And then you see Cappuccino being able to ramp one of the, the key factors of this deck. We may see this 52k come out very early, but it will just help Cappuccino ramp even more. Oh. There's an armored train. And another United we stand. I don't think you dropped the train yet. It Still will just get removed. Around. Oh, interesting that Cappuccino did not decide to get the Unite we stand in. I think the reason might be he experienced it earlier. You want to have 13 credits. Yeah, and you the also want to credits. take out you want to take out these 52 Ks as well, right? Yeah. So not really seeing the need to get rid of the the guards there, the four two. Instead he gets plus four healing now if he trades with the eight hundred forty fifth into it. And keeps his ramp potential for later after turn 12. Or after 12 credits. Yeah, I, I think you leave this 52k alive. Um, again, <laughs> completely going against what I say. <laughs> Can they hear you? Are you just uh, doing like, the exact opposite of what you're saying? But I mean, so, you know, this, this proves a point because they're in the OCC and I'm not. <laughs> you have been, so... Yeah, unfortunately, uh, not not this time. Yeah, I've heard no. you've been really busy with work lately, huh? Oh, it's been horrible. Six also, days a week, a lot of weeks. Also getting more into this real life stuff that darkness yeah, is yeah. trapped into now. But I've not been doing I've not been doing the socializing side quest. I've been focused on the uh, good choice, the job good choice. the job part of it instead. The, the good side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, J King, is he going to hammer the 17th rifles? I, I think so. I think you should. Um, but you can also go for a sickle and then brigade it as well. Just the issue with that is sickle brigade can take out a unit which has been buffed, whereas hammer yeah. can. Yeah. Better keep that one. Ah. Oh. Cappuccino almost reached 12 credits, at which point they can use the uh, the UWS, you know, if we stand. Yeah, he's not doing the trades for exact that reason, right? He's not trading the 845th under that, just to wait until turn 12, so he can get the United we stand on that end. Thinking. Considering the armored train. I don't see too much advantage in playing it just at the moment. But we'll see if it can get some work done. You, you do slowly spit out these little guys to start trading into things. Just I feel like this isn't a trading game. I mean, you know, it is it is a CCG, but this game in particular, this match in particular isn't a trading game. Aiken goes for the trade. Yeah, Find getting, sender. Getting rid of the two red unit there on his end, so there's no potential United we stand for Cappuccino. I mean, no, not really. Jay can get to better heal much. Sitting on 20 health exactly. I, I say heal much at all for that matter. Now we can see the hammer come out. We light infantry trade. And UWS. For the 13 credits. 
you can push up the train to the front line as well. Do you think we'll see J King just drop this uh, Winter Warfare? Why not? Gets rid of a lot of stuff. Yeah. Cappuccino pushes completely to the front line and Ura, double Ura next turn. Could actually be huge if J King doesn't clear this. Yeah, yeah J King just says you just play it safe. Completely aware of the situation and Cappuccino's hand not that great at the moment. No, 845 needs... scorchers. Yeah. Needs to find some draw, really. But a couple stand fast, and this could very quickly turn into an ATK hand. J King. I, I would kind of like to see this 52k come out now. So you can start chipping away. Because we've seen some removal. Oh, and the US research could be very big. You are able to do a lot of damage with this if you want to go to nukes, but you can also go penicillin, and, and that will just give your HQ a, a big buff. Or you, or you can go ultimate Chad move and go for the Flying Fortress. <laughs> yeah, actually, also the, the u boat is not bad out of the German research. Yeah. Cappuccino already low on cards. If there's additionally hitting a u boat this could be very crucial. Now, it's worth noting, bolster stand fast combo works very well on these engineers. While yeah. they are a 0-4, um, they will become a 4-8 with bolster, and then obviously any stand fast that are stacked up on top of that. But Jaking oh. just finding repeated Ooh. removal. It was an important one, actually. So, I mean, as much as I love Cappuccino's decks, uh, and they've brought some really interesting ones, I think this game here is a really good example of why I like to see either single confusion or single partisans. Because when you can't find units to combo off with, it gives you just an extra option by stealing your opponent's units and killing them with their own tools. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I like how this German research is still in the hand there. Yeah. Although it got played. It's just, it's an American research in disguise. It goes for the pressurized cabins! Going for the super fortress! And high altitude, right? Yeah. Smart idea. He knows that Cappuccino is not having that much units in the deck. Now, we apologize for this slight bug on researches. They're not in hand. It's just a visual thing. J King has gone for the flying uh, flying bomb, played it, and now has this uh, bombs away. This high pressurized cabin. Asking myself is J King is also seeing that. No, it might be just in the spectator mode, right? It, it'll Shaking be spectator is not mode. looking concerned yeah. right now that he's not no, no, able no. to see his cards. It, it will just be the spectator mode. It, it's one of these things which happens sometimes. Yeah, you always want to get the stuff out of the front line, so there's no potential Ura, Bolster, Standfast combo possible. And J King has a lot of tools to remove units. He also has Sendai left, he has the Naval Brigade left. Do you just uh, battery this engineers to make sure J King can't heal? Oh, there's the first stand fast. Yeah, go on. Goes for the hammer. hammer. Goes for the battery as well. Now, J King finds the hammer, otherwise, they're going to have to use their engineers. I think it's important you kill this unit right now. Yeah. Every unit that is on board and in the front line needs to be removed. And not pushing to the front line. Very sensible. I did not save. Oh. Oh, this is a very, very risky maneuver. And it looks I mean, like it's going to be punished. I mean, has to do some stuff here. He, they you know play the Irregulars. Jacking, never going to the front line, probably. Yeah, yeah, but you play the Irregulars instead. Because that doesn't have blitz. Now, J King just has to decide how to answer this problem. And also, J King has to take the front line if he ever wants to get this super fortress down. <laughs> so long as you have a unit of blitz left in the deck, J King doesn't have that as an option. But I mean, this this here is a perfect example of why I feel like just single confusion or single partisans, because every unit you play is just getting deleted. And Cappuccino has the full combo, just nothing to do with it. Yeah, and J King will never go to the front line here, I guess. J King should have the card 
the, or the deck size advantage, I guess. That's why you can just lean back here and just do nothing. I think it was the wrong screen that we did the deck sizes on, but decks look very similar. Yeah, the, the guards are also drawing cards. So it might be almost equal here. 13 versus 15 cards it is. So two card advantage for JK. Hey, so what You've got the OT-34s, what else is left? So yeah, yep. 12 for Cappuccino at the moment, 14 for J-King. Well, nothing that can J-King fully rely on, so you need, also need to get some damage in at some point. However, you know, J-King has a lot of options still for, for finishing the, for not only finishing the game, but removing you. Triple stand fast. You just go second scorched earth. If you ever need the hand space. Uh, is Cappuccino having 17 rifles left? We I believe one so. Two. One, one left. right. So one yeah, left. go Scorched Earth. Go for the draw. You can even play a stand fast first if you need the hand space. You can go Scorched Earth, stand fast. But you stand fast and possibly this Takasaki so that Jaken can't take advantage of the damage. And then yep. you go for this draw engine. That's what we're exactly seeing here. Oh, also smart move. Just... I mean, other way around would have been slightly better, right? There's the Great Patriotic War. Bloody sickle overdraw. I think you play the battery here just so you don't overdraw next turn. Go for the battery onto... Onto the 4-3. Oh, the 4-4. Why, why that one over the ambush 4-4? I don't know. Really, also the order with the Scorch Earth was was messed up. Yeah, yeah. Should have played Scorch Earth first, then Takazagi would go to four operation calls. Would stand fast. It would be at nine. Possibly feeling the pressure a little bit. Really, what I'm looking for? No. Taking him an eleven damage plus. Yeah, not more. Bolster the Schmolster. Yeah, look at this hand. Two stand fast, triple Bolster. But Jaking has 11 this turn, but then he can put down the 52k as well, which means next turn is lethal. Yes, even if Chevachino's playing the Great Doesn't put down the 52k. Jaking finds an OT34, which will be removed by Jaken. And that should be it then, I guess. One more opportunity to top deck lethal. I, I'm slightly disappointed we didn't see this 52 cam out from Jaken. As, as it would have set up lethal. Yeah. This is and, it. And what, what, what would you hold it back for? Oh, then? it's an oh. OT34. No blitz unit, and that means that stand fast OTK deck is not working out here for Cappuccino. And... Just, can you imagine how different this game would have been with a partisans or a confusion? And yeah. Jaking, happy with that, takes the series. Cappuccino put up a good fight, made some errors, made some mistakes, but I mean, they've made it this far. I, I don't think we should hold it against them because they've proved themselves in the past. And we, we all make these mistakes. The only difference between Cappuccino and our mistakes here is Cappuccino's is in front of all of us for us to see and judge. You know, yeah. we all make these mistakes at home. We all make them all the time. We just don't have a big camera in front of us. <laughs> Sometimes, but not that big yeah. of a camera yet. I mean, yeah, that was it. Some some cool matches. Congrats to J King for advancing to the next stage. And I think we take a look at the bracket and then we give it back to Ollie and Darkness. Okay, so, one second on the bracket. Yeah. So anything which surprised you there, or was that pretty much how you expected it to be? Yeah, I was surprised how well the last match went for, for J King there. Um he he had a lot of removal and he had a good match plan whenever Cappuccino had a unit in the front line that could give a potential OTK there. He removed it, really well played. Cappuccino not really with any chance to do there. And as you said, maybe one one party sense or one confusion could have changed the game there. Honestly, I think I would prefer 
the confusion because just it's a little bit cheaper. You um, know the the other unit you can also run is this 0k 554. It's my favorite blitzer for lethal. You put down this 0k infantry and then you use that as your way of uh, killing. But anyway, moving on. So J King, moving on from game one. Um, what do you want to take us through the brackets with? Yeah, J King just won against um, Cappuccino last match. Uh, we saw the first match there where Tank Tank just won against Captain A. Um, in the meantime, Evergarden just lost 2 0 against Tiger. So Tiger in the semi finals here. And then the fourth match, No. 5 Virtus versus Artemisia. That Artemisia won 2 1. So we will have the semi finals where Jake King is taking on Tang Tang, both very huge rivals. Um, this could be a really good semi final, expecting a lot for that. And then on the second semi final, we have Tiger versus Artemisia. Um, yeah, really exciting stuff coming up here in the semi finals. But for now, we give it back to Ollie and Darkness to cast the series J King versus Tang Tang. Thank you so much, Spoos and Bubbles. Uh, and what a great series that was. I mean, it was uh, an extremely tight one. But I, I just have to ask the question, Darkness. Um, OTK decks in tournaments, not really working out. I mean, I feel like in open lists, uh, J King was able to just hold the units back, not give him a chance to blitz him out. Once he knew that all the blitz units or, or most of the blitz units were pretty much gone, he could then start taking the front line and putting on the pressure. Um, do you think it's 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 viable to bring OTK decks in tournaments, or, or are we just gonna always see you know at this high level of play the opponent being able to play around it in most cases? Well, OTK decks are a two-edged sword, Oli. Um, I, in, in this matchup, I think J King had a really tough position, and he only won because he didn't make mistakes, and Cappuccino did some mistakes. Mm -hmm. If Cappuccino played this perfectly, the matchup is favorite for for them, and. Uh, I, I I watched J King's face. He was not happy going into those matchups. He he knew those oh, uh, this OTK deck in particular was very very dangerous to his matchup. Actually, I I had a chat before the uh, this tournament with him, um, thinking about the this OTK deck. And the only reason he didn't ban it was that the other control deck, the German Italy control deck, was way more scary. But of course, uh, OTK decks can work. They are just not very reliable. You you need to find the combo pieces, and there's a lot more RNG involved. And cards is a game where there is not a lot of RNG compared to Hearthstone or something else. And people really like that. They, they like to be dependent on their own skills rather than RNG. So th I, I believe this is the reason why OTK decks are not that popular, but especially in tournament settings, they have very great potential. As you, you saw with Dian, you know, or yeah. with the yeah. Bater in in the yeah. world championship yeah. uh, for example the spitfire otk deck is so powerful in certain matchups and if you are preparing for matchups and with lineups um you need to consider otk deck yeah it's maybe one of those one of those decks that can kind of sneak up on you right and, and yeah. if, you, if you find a strong enough deck and you manage to get it into a tournament before people manage to start maybe teching around there get experience against it it can definitely propel you far but um I've, i feel like at least in in recent memory we haven't seen uh, a lot of success for most otk decks and i feel like a lot of that kind of has to do with the level of play that they are facing and just the extremely skilled play by the opposition to kind of avoid uh, all the small traps that you might fall into on ladder um but 
Awesome series. J King advances. Uh, he's going to be facing off against Tang Tang in our second semifinal match, but we'll give them a little bit of a break before uh, they start playing. So what we have coming up next is going to be Tiger versus Artemisia. And uh, Artemisia, we haven't seen uh, his decks, uh, so let's jump on in and take a little look. Um, starting here with... Uh, a deck we should all be intimately familiar with at this point. It is Brit Air with the USA as a, an ally. Um, I believe we can just go on to the next one. And there we see, uh, if we bring up the next deck, then we can see um, this one. This is a deck that we talked about, uh, but didn't really look at in the warm-up show in the war room. But this is, of course, the german humber deck right uh so for any of the new players that might be tuning in here this deck is all about that humber at mark ii from the british side that fury uh one three tank being buffed up by the Henschel, um and all of a sudden it's delivering tons of damage into the face of your opponent very early on in the game as you can see from the credit curve uh, 17 one drops uh, four zero cost cards and 12 two drops this uh, deck is not aiming to go the distance uh, by any means and then the final deck here from artemisia also a very aggressive deck that is uh, basically just Jagro, right? 30 cards costing two or less, um, the highest cost card being Feigned Retreat. Feigned Retreat once played, discards your entire hand, but you draw a card every time that you drop a unit. So if Artemisia is able to get that off, he can really quickly flood the board. And even just through the burn, uh, destruction effects from these units take out his opponent. And then on the flip side, you have Tiger's decks. Darkness, talk us through these. Yeah, Tiger decks are starting with Japan Italy. This one is another J aggro and another Japan aggro deck, but it's uh, it's using Italy. And this is due to the recent change of Fiat and Machi. Uh, so this one looking very, very interesting. Another try to make the this little airplane work and it has not gonna lie a lot of potential do you see the amount of one credit cards here yeah it's it's huge this deck is able to flood the board with a lot of zero operation cost units and then trying to get naval supply run on top of that uh, unlike other Jagro decks, it's featuring Yamagata Regiment, two credit, zero operation cost, infantry with two, three stats, and it gets Ambush, Blitz, and Fury if you have no cards in hand. And yeah, it's it's just this playstyle. It's going all in from turn one on, and to to be able to refill some cards. We do see expansion. Uh, this card got renamed. Previously, this was Rising Sun, and this card is not often seen in tournaments at all. I, I believe in six months or nine months, we we didn't saw expansion in tournaments, like in OCCs and cards open, because Enigma and Frighten Retreat were just more available and reliable. Mm -hmm. But looking at this Italian uh, truck to J Agro, it makes a lot of sense because all you all you want to do is going into the front line, and then you can use expansion. And yeah. yes, that's the interesting new deck Tiger made here. His next deck, Brit Main and US Ally, it's the. Yeah, the British airlist we we saw already today, and we already explained a lot. So uh, I think we can skip this again. And the last one of Tiger is again the German Humber deck. Uh, looking at this deck, he's using he's using the typical aggressive low cost units like the fifth parachute brigade panzer 2a humber of course in the humber deck jaeger regiment all of that stuff well some people are using comet or auto auto cannon 
some people aren't. Uh, he is using this, but for anyone who's new into this game, um, I recommend trying this deck because you don't really need elites. You yeah. you can make this budget and it's still very effective. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, I would also say, like, especially earlier on in your journey through cards, you're not necessarily going to be facing opponents that have as many removal cards or as many ways to deal with your aggression. So if you're able to craft this deck, uh, you should find good success with it. And I'm just I'm just looking at these decks and I think I think Bubbles was right. I mean, normally we get the 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 long games and they get the short games, but uh, I think we're gonna, we're about to see some slugfests here. However, if we remember from the last OCC, we got a lot of the aggro versus aggro matchups that ended up actually going fairly, you know, deep into the game and deep into the deck yeah. because it was just a back and forth, you know, battle for for supremacy uh, and and battle for the front line without any significant damage being delivered to face. So. Uh, I'm really, really excited to see what this matchup has in store. And of course, Tiger and Artemisia, both uh, extremely good players. Artemisia making it to the finals of last month's Officer Club Championship, where Hui Hui uh, beat him out. But uh, I, I feel like Artemisia is still on that climb. He's still now wanting to kind of prove himself as um, you know that that top Chinese competitor. And now he's beaten out no in five. He's made it into the semifinals and just a couple more wins and he can uh, f claim finally a, a title here. Beating no in five is already a title worthy, I believe, Oli. Yeah. Well, if, if, if you are looking against uh, into those lineups, yeah, there you can see it. Both oh, players are bringing Jack Rue, both player are bringing the Humber deck, both player are bringing Brit Air, and Brit Air is definitely the strongest here because those Bombers are able to to challenge the Humber deck and their aggro early on, and United We Stand is so strong. So both player know that and they ban Brits. Yeah. Uh, and now we are seeing J aggro and Humbers. J aggro and Humbers, and now it's going to be very interesting to see if that uh, different take on J Aggro is going to come in clutch uh, in the mirror matchup. I mean, uh, we see that Artemisia is running the very kind of standard version of J Aggro, but then Tiger bringing the Italy as backup, and we started off with Humber versus Humber. So Germany versus Germany, who finds a better starting hand there? Artemisia already having a lot of components uh, that are yeah. good to have early on. And I mean, just turn one can drop two units if he so chooses and start pressuring. Artemisia's mulligan looks perfect. Tiger is looking for something different, not, not really finding uh, what they need. Artemisia having having this infantry uh, uncontested, no mobilizing, ramping up, and turn two getting the Jaeger regiment, reducing the operation cost on this tank. The the only downside is this tank is not in Humber with Fury. Yeah, that would be perfect, but it's it's close. It's very close to being a perfect start here for Artemisia. Setting um, a lot of pressure <laughs> onto Tiger. Yeah, and finding a Blitzkrieg as as well. Um, unfortunate for him that he doesn't have more units in the front line, or otherwise there could have been a very very quick game here. As a Blitzkrieg top deck isn't feels awkward. It's just three damage. Yeah, but I mean, he decides to push it. He decides to just go for it and uh, try and put on the pressure, but. I don't think it's wrong to put on some pressure, but maybe moving moving the fifth parachute into the front line, blocking the front line would have been a good call too. Look, and one thing one thing that we saw last tournament with a bunch of Humber decks, right? That was that uh, No. One Five did that great last time. He would double buff a unit, and that double buff unit secured him of the victory 
you know, in pretty much all the, the mirror matchups or, you know, contested aggro matchups. And that's exactly what Tiger has done here. That's 6-5. It's really, really scary because I mean, now he can push it up and he can take out the mobilized unit if he if he wants to. He can he can block the front line. He has a lot of options all of a sudden. Yeah, he, he needs to. The start looked really great for Tamija, but if Tiger and he is trying uh to just trade out as much as possible, this unit already took down two or three units. And yeah, I mean, now he's able to establish a board and getting more card war. That that turned, this table turned from being perfect, close to perfect for Artemisia to now Tiger getting dominant. Ooh. <laughs> pincer galore here. Everything is pincered back and forth. But, ah, second Paracy onto the bomber. Perfect top deck there for Tiger if he goes for it. He... He's not going for it. Oh, opting to instead to take out the operating cost pincer. I think that's a that's a questionable move there, uh, given the fact that second Paracy can trade into the front line. No, okay, just he goes for it this way around. Maybe he didn't realize uh, the combo, of course. He could have kept that, um, could have basically done that for free with the bomber, but another second pair of C here from Artemisia. And this is not looking good. He knows this is just done. He has yeah. no cards. He has no way of drawing back into the game. And that, that was tough. fast. <laughs> yeah, that, that was fast. I wonder if. Uh, Artemisia could have won this game by not using Blitzkrieg turn turn three, but moving his fifth parachute into the front line. Like having more units in the front line, getting a bigger Blitzkrieg and um, staying for longer in the front line could have changed something. Potentially. But now Potentially. we see Artemisia switches it up and opts for the Jagro versus Jagro mirror. But look at the hand from Tiger. He has two 16th Cav and he can just push that. Artemisia being very... Um, well, he, they kept the Panzer of Filzwagen in order to, to drop it when they are going into the... In, into the front line, but I'm I'm fearing Artemisia was a little bit too optimistic here. Going for more 1k drops would have probably better. Well, choosing to, to stick to the Akita Regiment is a good choice against other Jagros, because you can just drop it, turn 2, trade, turn 3, and probably killing 2 units. Oh, naval supply run. Just mm, wait not yet. There. Wait for it. There's there's another cavalry regiment and the fiat uh, possibility here, or pinning the Akita regiment is another option. Oh, Tiger! Look, looks like Tiger is going to trade out the Akita hit to protect more units. Yeah, that's very interesting. And I mean, kind of makes sense given the fact that he wants to get the naval supply run on as many units uh, as he can. And yeah, he, 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 HP is just a resource and he's take using his HQ to eat the Akita hit guaranteed to protect his the other units because I'm, Unlike Artemisia, he, he lacks a comeback mechanic with uh, Frightened Retreat and Enigma. He really depends on holding the front line with expansion and then using as much units as possible, buffing with naval supply. <clears throat> so Taiga not only made a new deck with Italy, like J Agro Italy, they also know how, how to play this in the J. Acro Mirror against Japan Germany. This is very impressive. Yeah, and the Dina being taken out there, and that's not great for Artemisia, because I think Artemisia was really hoping to be able to 
kind of blitz out some units here and get the double Befelswagen deployed in the front line. That would be nice. Yeah, but all what Artemisia has to do right now, uh, they need to get rid of the Japan units. Yeah. But look at and... it. It's just waiting. It's just waiting there. Artemisia, well, as soon as he moves one unit into the front line, he has three units there, and that's a ton of pressure. It really is. Well, those airplanes are looking looking strong too. I mean, bombing raid can't kill both because this Machi has four, no five, HP. This this looks. So okay, he can move it up. I mean, he also has two Type ninety four uh, TKs there, so he is able to basically. Um, remove yeah. a unit, but he opts to do it over two turns and just keep that unit pinned so it doesn't take more damage. That's also a completely viable option here. Yeah, like that. Preventing more damage and having two pencil oh. trades in the front. Wow. That's that... not what you want to see. No, send average man plus isolation would be the, the play to get rid of those Panzer Feldsbank out of the front line. Ah, but that that really hurts. That does. And it's looking like Artemisia is going to have the upper hand here because, like you said, expansion is the draw option here for Tiger. And if he's not having any Japanese units in the front line, he can't make use of that. So he just has to float and pass full six credits. And Keep in mind, there's another Type 94, so Artemisia for two credits just, can just keep that airplane pinned and deliver, what is that, eight damage to face? Yeah, nine with the Type out of the back line. Just pin it again. Ah, no, he's not using that. Sending another Calvary Regiment into the front again. Tiger is lacking AoE, so no desperate measures to he run here. He can pin one unit. He can isolate another. Um, and that's it. <laughs> but that's it. And I believe that's not going to be enough to avoid lethal with a bombing raid in hand here from Artemisia. Um, this is exactly lethal still. Yeah. It is exactly lethal. It is four from the combined attacks of the Type 94s. Well, he has, he has one extra, right? With the bombing rate. Yeah, yes, he has one extra. And they they have. have. There we go. And that's going to be game number two going to Artemisia. And a quick, quick two games here in this uh, series. And now we know that it's going to be the Humber deck from Artemisia taking on the J aggro deck here and I think that is going to be a difficult one from Tiger if Artemisia is able to get a good mulligan right I think I think if Artemisia gets like a, a really bad mulligan doesn't manage to find an early uh, early platform to buff and, and start trading then maybe Tiger has this but we'll have to see you, you can you can change the name here it basically describes most aggro decks who wants to get really dominant by turn two to four on the field. And they're great. Did Artemisia just send back the Greif and the Jäger Battalion? Yes. Oh well, my god, and he gets the fifth parachute brigade off the top. Um Not Turn one Fiat looks scary. Zero operation cost two two airplane, not gonna lie. But yeah, of course it was necessary for Artemisia to be able to find this little tank. Yeah, and he establishes just so much power on the board now. That's the four six. Um and he will have the power to Oh, but the isolation. The isolation can come into play. Isolation. I wonder if Tiger is going to raid one more turn. Oh, the Machi. But I, I guess isolation is way too powerful here. 
heads it yeah, needs to go. Second but second parachute. Is, second parachute is able to kill the Yamagata regiment. I think this is necessary. I mean, looking at two expansions at the hand of Tiger, this Japan unit needs to go. Yeah. I mean, you also just don't have a ton of other options, really, to establish anything on the board, and you don't want to just leave the board empty. I like playing the 5th Parachute Brigade here, um, basically kind of saying, okay, don't hit my face, you know, trade this mobilize unit away before it grows too big. It also means that he's more than likely to have going to have, you know, two unit types on the board for that combined arms. Imagata and Machi. So... Artemisia can use both combined arms on his tank. Makes it 5-7. Oh. <laughs> <third> one. <laughs> but is, uh... going into the front line with the Fury unit as well is preparing for Blitzkrieg. So I like that. And I mean, the amount of burst that can come out of Tiger isn't very huge, I believe. I mean, I don't have any experience really playing against this version of the Jagro deck, but I mean, I, I, think, I think it would have been a fair play to, to push the second Paracy up. Would be a fair <laughs> place, but your combined arms is useless without a tank. Yeah. And currently there's one only tank. Uh, on the side of Artemisia, so buffing this two times, trading into the Machi, I fully understand this move. That's true, and I, I talk about burst, and then of course Tiger top decks the Sheedon, uh, does not have the credits to utilize it properly, but now he has a decision to make. Uh, ops to trade the 5th Parachute Regiment. Well, mobilization is scary, and like that, the Sheen ambush is protect protecting in theory. But uh, the other combined arms will buff this tank to 5 health, being able to kill the Sheen. And I believe Artemisia should do that. Yeah, killing was... killing the Sheen and taking the front line or well, moving the, the parachute into the front line again, preparing for Blitzkrieg. And so... this is why you rarely see uh, expansion in tournaments. If you are not holding the front line, Tigers just have holding two useless cards. Yeah. And the spawning raid top deck did a lot of damage. To be fair, Artemisia played this very well. The three HP units to the side. So uh, he's keeping two units and makes that three attack with Blitzkrieg. This was 12 damage. That's just so mm. much damage. So much, indeed. There's a Blitz Japan unit only able to kill one. And the type... Uh, Tiger should have... Dropped the type earlier. No, the Humber is just able to. to oh, that's rid of it, it, right? No, oh, not enough credits, and not not enough damage too. So that would be seven damage with um eleven credits. Yeah, but yeah, those expansions are just useless in his hand, and uh, looks like. Japan German aggro proved <laughs> proved to be the superior version of it, but I still appreciate bringing something new to the tournaments. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I we always like to see innovation, and I feel like under under different circumstances, maybe this could have worked well from Tiger, but it's just it it. It's true what you say, right? That expansion is just such a limited draw option, right? It, it is so dependent on you holding the front line. And it feels like it's probably more powerful against slower control-oriented decks. 
Um, but of course, you know, Tiger just comes into here and it's uh, three aggro decks versus three aggro decks and uh, everything that he puts out just gets immediately traded and all of a sudden, no Japan units in the front line, no option to draw, empty hands, and that means broken dreams. Uh, so unfortunately, we say goodbye to Tiger here in the semifinals, but that means Artemisia progresses into the grand finals of this Officer Club Championship for the second month running. So Artemisia really on a tear. Yeah, yeah, really, really impressive. Now, we are going to see first the third match. The no, third we, we, still match. Have, we still oh. have a second semifinal to go through. Ah, sorry, I... <laughs> yeah, of course. We, we need to get back to Spoos and Bubbles before we are going to, to see some spots here. There we see uh, what the bracket looks like. With that, we see Artemisia securing themselves a spot in the grand finals are they going to be facing off against j king or tang tang we will figure that out next so we'll throw it over to spoos and bubbles to bring you the second semi-finals of the may officer club championships yeah welcome back first of all props to ollie and darkness for picking the correct semi-final there and having the faster match again um really insane series nevertheless um yeah what a cool one right it was a fast one but yeah that japan italy deck not really paying out for tiger there what do you think no i mean the the isolation was very cool to see but like you say it didn't really pay off all the way um but i'm definitely going to give the deck a try and see if i can't work on it a little bit and make it work towards my play style but I, yeah it was a lot of fun so what we are see going to see next is the second semi-final tang tang versus j king um, I think we are going to take a short look to the deck list and then we are good to go uh, for a good semi-final. I think we're just going to go straight into the bands, I think, because ah. we've seen we've seen the okay. deck list earlier. We, we took a look. Well, yeah, you're correct. Took a look. Yeah, yeah. So J-Kings or, or J-Kings, um, Brit yeah, deck being, <laughs> being banned there from Tang Tang and Tang Tang's Germany deck being banned. Anything which surprises you here? Um, not really, I guess. I'm shaking really prepared for aggro, so it would not make sense to ban that Brit deck. Tang Tang banning J King's Brit list also makes sense uh, in a way, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think there would have been some logic to, to J King also banning this Brit deck because I, I think Brit yeah. is just such a scary deck. And earlier versus Cappuccino, we saw one of the decks they were able to to take Jaking down with was their their Brit Air deck. Um, so I, I think there would have been logic to banning that as well. But it sort of feels like you ban the Germany deck, you get beaten by the Brit one, or you ban the Brit one, you get beaten by the Germany one. At least with the Britain one, it's a lot quicker. You know, you save yourself some pain of a quick death. Yeah, I think it was a hard decision again for Jaking which deck to ban. Because he prepared for aggro and Tang Tang having US pawn in mid-range and German Eagle control in, in this lineup. You probably chose between, between these two because against Bird Air he is prepared and... Yeah, yeah I, I'm very excited reason. to see J King Soviet deck get to operate against something which isn't an OTK deck. Um, because I'm very interested to see how this deck will operate against it. Um, but we may just get to see it go up against this Brit deck, which we saw earlier, you know, this this Britain deck is very powerful against this. You can bypass the guards of your bombers, and, and you don't really have many ways of the Soviets with dealing with these air units. Um, you obviously, a, did on. you play the Soviet deck against Brit Air in his first round match? Uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, this um, was the one he, he lost, right? So. Yeah. If um, Tang Tang can manage to queue into this one with, with the Brit Airlist, could be a chance to, to take that game there. Yeah, I, I'm I'm very excited to see it match up against a regular deck, though. Um, but obviously, you know, Soviets, they do have some more options to deal with that now with this 52k and all of that, but it's still it's still not a great matchup, um, especially when you don't have cards like Confusion to, to take these uh, Swordfishes and trade away with them. Um, but even then, it's not great because... With Confusion, you want to target units with high attack and low defense so that they die. Um, or you want a Euro Stone, which is very expensive these days. Um, and these Swordfishes have such high defense that it's still not great. 
So I, I think the Soviets are going to be a difficult one. Um, our players are going to hop into the match in just a moment, but before they do, any predictions, Spooz? I mean, I think these two pe people are probably the strongest and most consistent players here. Which one is going to win? Yeah, it's a really close one, I guess. Um, I said Tang Tang would win the whole OCC, so I probably stick with my guess on Tang Tang. Um, what do you think? Well, I'll go Jaking, you know, create some competition. Um, how much, you know, I, I'll put a year's wages on it. Year's wages down, Jaking's going to win. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or, or dinner, you know. If I if Jaking wins, you pay for dinner. If Tang Tang wins, I pay for dinner. Okay. Yeah, there you go. That is how you coax someone into going on a date with you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh yeah. You could have just asked, Bubbles. You could have just asked. <laughs> and now our players are into the match. We see the Soviet versus USA. All right. Jaking finding the Amphibious Assault here. The Hammer. Two good cards against. Oh, I mean, the Hammer is probably better than Amphibious Assault. Like the Sherman, the California, they all have more than three attack. But 845th, also a good find here. And Inspiring, just to have the flexibility on finding some good stuff out of that. Pretty good starting hand here for, for both players. Tank Tank found no. 30 second. It's worth noting this USA Pono deck, it has been nerfed in a, in a couple ways, right? Yeah. California, first of all. Yeah. Not, no longer also reducing the damage from orders to one. It now receives the full package of damage from orders. And also the underground state got nerfed, right? Yeah, Not, no longer now... sending units to hand. It just retreats instead of yeah. full bounce. So if you push up to the front line, you're not going to have your, your unit thrown all the way back to your hand. Um, very, you know, standard start here. The, the 32nd infantry being spammed out and the, the UWS to just give you a little bit of an edge with this USA Poland deck. And then the Soviet deck doing its standard stuff where it, it sort of gets a little bit of healing and fights a little bit for the board. But it's mostly just buying time for it. It's sort of mid-game. Big, you know, power spike. Yep, Jacking unfortunately finding 52k out of the parade here, a card that is only used for the Sky Train, I guess, so one would be enough to have in hand. Unfortunately paraded it and has two now. Good sickle find here on top of a stack. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of these, uh, these USA decks, they also run things like the Catalina and all of that. Um, but none of that to target. You can target the uh, crass though, and stop that, you know, going out of control. Forgot about Catalina. That's also a good one to have a 52k Yeah, Tang Tang's against. not running it, though. Oh, he's not even running it. No, okay. no, no, but he has got two Karasses in, in Tang Tang's decks, and those are quite high-value targets to take out as well. So you completely um, forgot about these, yeah. But having 252k is probably not the worst that could happen there. That's PIR what you're trying to out. say. Yeah, yeah. It's not terrible. Not great, not terrible. <laughs> Now we're going to see the Amphibious Assault take out the PIR. Very nice move. And I imagine we'll see this hammer wait for this California like we did before. Tang Tang finds the Unity. Goes for the Strat Bombing. It's with the little one, as to not kill the big one. When these, uh, when these Soviet 06 guards die, they do free damage to any target which damaged it that turn. Um, so it would have killed the unit. Just in case anyone was wondering, why didn't he go for the trade? Um, it forces J King. Here you go to spend one credit and go for the trade himself. Now, really, Tang Tang only having one source of intel at the moment, so kind of wants to save that intel until you find these Tarnos to combo off. Sherman, very nice top deck. We may mm. see a Plan West, we may see the second Sherman, and we may even see a trade into UWS. Good options here. Decides to go for the second Sherman, establishing a bigger board there. Oh, there is the Scorch Earth. But I feel like the... maybe you save yes. it, right? Yeah, yeah, I think you save it. It's not the best spot to go for it. These Germans have two operation costs anyways. And really, all... you, yeah. you want to hit a, a wall of legions with that and just completely brick yeah. you know, the, the board state for Tang Tang. Exactly. That's what we're looking for. 
although finds the Karas, so has a lot of now intel in hand, can start spelling out these legions. UWS gonna come. I think, yeah, you go for the Plan West here, right? Probably, yeah. Also, yeah, there's not a lot of other plays that make sense here. And J King's hand, he has the 272nd, but other than that, the hand is not looking that great. A lot of removal, sure. But if tank, ta yeah, okay. Is, is he already going for it? Yeah, it goes for the Scorch Death. Yeah, that's already a good one. So Tang Tang needs to spend a lot of credits to get his units out of the front line now, uh, out of the support line. However, doesn't, you know, ruin Tang Tang's game as much as it would against like a, a far more aggressive deck because this is mid range. You're going to get to look 11 credits here for Tang Tang. 7 for J King, 11 for Tang Tang. So Tang Tang does have the credits to still operate and do things within this Scorched Earth. Yep. So the Strat Bomb and the United We Stand really did some great work there to get a great credit advantage. But it's still hurting Tang Tang, like it's slowing them down so lot. Or so much. So what can Tang Tang do here? Blitz California Frontline? Yeah, you can blitz Cali front line, you can push up front line and put the caress. Start buffing up these units. Yeah, especially with unity in hand, it can be a smart move to move one unit to the front line to have it there, and then you have the potential to give it the unity. Play another plan west, but not needed at the moment. There's another California. Three Californias in hand now. It'd be a good idea to just push one of these to the front line since Jaking already showed a hammer. And if you can manage to get this um, to survive and then play Unity on it, it could be problems for J King, but we know that J King is having a naval brigade in hand, which is a very good removal against California now nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Because it will take damage. Yeah, and the old version just the health got reduced without um counting as damage, but now they get also get damaged. So yeah, California really, really needed a nerf. Like when we did that experiment from the new account climb, like California can just carry your whole game in the old state. And I think they did a good change. It is still very strong, but it's dying to things like carpet bombing now. So really good change and an important change. I think it was really annoying for players in the lower stage. I mean, it's one of those things where you would just craft it as soon as on a new account. And yeah. you'd be like, well, this is just easy now. Absolutely. Okay, can instantly get rid of this because he knows there is the potential of a unity and you don't want to deal with a with a nine seven California. Yeah. What can Tang Tang do here? Move one Legion, blitz another. California to the front line. Yeah, not not that many other plays. That Stars and Stripes is not doing a lot. Is he going to blitz and play the Unity in one turn? Maybe on the Legion unit? Or oh, is this... Oh, yes. Playing it on the California still with double guard. 
So even a hammer not good enough now, but Jacking is having the Senda Regiment. Bye bye California going to bed now. No. Any other play there? He's going to draw first. Finds the oh, hammer yeah. as well. Which means, you know, when this Sendai is killed, which it will be the Stars and Stripes, it gives Jaking an opportunity to then just hammer the replace uh, the, the return. Oh, finds another guard. However, it's just going to be set down by four. Because this Stars and Stripes just absolutely huge. Yeah, absolutely amazing Stars and Stripes here. Thinking, yeah, you, you definitely go for this here. Giving the California back and blitz it to the front line again. He wants to. Jaking still has another hammer in hand there. Yeah, which would just answer the replacement. Um, you can buff it, but that's only going to put it on six, so it doesn't even get it out of the hammer range. I feel like, do you put double Cali into the front line? Could do that, or just... I mean, you already dealt four damage to this, right? So you probably not bounce that one. Ooh. Still decides to go for it, okay. Interesting. I mean, that means you can buff this out of hammer range, is what one huge upside of that. And look at that. Plus four plus four gives it that seven defense, meaning Jay can Jay King can hammer this. Jay King is just having a wall full of guards here. Look at this. This, then he has two more, two eight drops. I'm sorry, but seeing Jay King go from drinking to just that static image of him smiling <laughs> has really gotten to me. <laughs> 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 oh i imagine he going Jake, to bletchley right you got it you go for bletchley do it if you can survive it's huge like almost all of the cards in tank tanks deck cost five or less i'll be honest i don't think he can survive not unless he finds like scorched earth Oh god, we can do it. Oh, but the, the second research, if he can find the US research, then he can potentially just, this turn you buff it up and you go for the US research next turn. If that's a US research, that could just be GG. Because what you can do, right? Is you can re you can do your your Brit research, get it to nine k. Then next turn, you you research Bletchley and you put down this depth charges to make your HQ immune, and it yeah. just sets you up perfect. Oh, oh it is not. No. It is not. Unfortunately, it is nine nine California, and there's another a lot of stuff waiting in the backline there for Tang Tang. Needing the partisans really to, to reset this cat, and we're gonna see J King take up to at least 10 damage this turn, potentially a lot more. And that that uh spiring could have been game changing, and that, that's the last spiring for J King, so he only runs the two. But if that had been a US research, it would have just been completely game changing. I mean, the big question is, can J King figure out a way of getting this off? And, and it's really not looking good. Even with the heal, even with the heal that you have coming in, putting up to 17, there's just so much damage here from Tang Tang. Yeah, I don't see a way. J King just one turn too late with the research. No it's, way it's, to yeah. guard it's up. It's unfortunate. You had a one in three. And, uh, you know, those are losing odds, but it's, it's also not impossible odds. 33%, it, it does happen. Yeah, I mean, and, and as we saw, J King is just always receiving the Brit research, and I did always receive the US research. Um, it's really strange with these spy rings. Looks like every player just has his fortune research there, I don't know. 
It's like stop it... moving decks around which ones you're gonna get. <laughs> really strange. She's just gonna always go... getting the bird one. Go for the radar. The clock is ticking. Okay, we were not helping here. Gonna put down the guard. And also go for the pin. It's gonna have to be quick. There's guard and engineers. Hoping to maybe find the partisans. However, underground state, and that should be game, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. If I'm not completely wrong. Oh, never mind, because of the credits on this mm -hmm. Sherman. Yeah, but with the front line, this legion's getting plus one, plus oh, one. Oh yeah, you're right. Well, six yeah, and yeah, seventeen. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he doesn't. He's not going to heal. Yeah. Do it. You have lethal. Doing the math twice. And J King. Applause Little round of from applause. J King. And actually, uh, not finding what he needs in that game one. So Tang Tang now just has to win with the Brit Air deck, which isn't that difficult to do. J King is going to have to find a way of overcoming Brit Air with Soviet control, which we've seen is a really difficult matchup. So I'm very interested to see if they're going to be able to pull that off. Do you expect J King now that he knows that um, Cappuccino, that Tang Tang has to play right there, probably bringing his US German frontline deck? I, I think you switch because it's a better matchup and be better, momentum huh? in your mind is, is very important. You you need to have a good mindset going into the game. So I, I definitely think you switch. Yeah, I would also switch. I would also expect J King to switch. And you know, you, you might say, oh, you need to win with both decks, it doesn't matter, but it absolutely matters because mindset is super important. But no, J King's sticking with the Soviets. Ooh. Possibly feeling more at home. I want the Scorcher, it's really important. Really wants to get rid of the hammer, for sure. Could also, you don't keep it for the Greyhound, right? Always get rid of it, Scorcher. Oh, no, you get rid of it. Ooh. Not the worst hand ever because of this partisans. However, Tang Tang obviously having a very aggressive hand. Uh, and I've got to be completely honest here. I don't like the looks Ooh. of this series. Even with this hand from J Kim, which is relatively good. I just feel like this matchup is, is near unwinnable for Soviet. Especially it, yeah. the, well, with the amount of draw people are playing, playing in their Brit Air deck. How are you going to counter that? Look at this, you get a 52k off, which is meant to be the count to the Brit Air, but it's just going to be, you know, UWS, and it turns into ramp for the Brit Air deck. Yeah. <laughs> Jacking not happy about that. Really is not. And additionally to that, the, the rough lightning is also so annoying, because even when you can just establish a board or bring down some guards, there's just a big rough lightning rolling in, and suddenly your HQ is unguarded again. Can play it again, but there's just another rough lightning rating. Really problematic. Like you're not guarding up, you're also helping your opponent by giving them value on their rough lightning and, and they're just increasing their lead on the board. That is what, what makes Brit Air even more annoying. And then additionally to that, you have all the pin cards. <laughs> oh, poor J King. Oh, God. So. Now he knows for a fact that there is not another Rough Lightning. So hopefully this guard is sticking on the board now. How can Tang Tang deal with this? Probably going for draw first. There it comes, finds another Swordfish, finds another UVS, a UWS. I mean, I feel like it's just it's such a difficult matchup for you. You can't yeah. go for the partisans because you've not got the credit. Your guards are just going to be eliminated. Oh, is he preparing for a winter offensive here? Look, it's the Brits again. What is going on? <laughs> what is this RNG? Look, J King's even saying, what is this? What? Yeah, what? Oh. how is that possible? Uh, oh, but Tang Tang able to put one of these out of range of this winter offensive.
And I mean, it's just starting to look really rough for Jaking, right? At least it's not looking great. So tank, tank, tanking here. Is he playing the what's, UWS on the Takasagi? What's your outs if you're Jaking here? What's your outs of this game? Because I'm, I'm trying to think about it and I'm having a hard time working it out. You can, right, probably. you can partisans one of these and trade into the other, but then what else do you have? Yeah, the problem with Brit Air, as you mentioned, is the draw. They can just refill their hands so quickly and just have another board established. And also with cards like Finest Hour and the... How's the Blitz Bomber called? That is getting cheaper. Wellington. The Wellington. Stuff like that can just give Brit Air so big comeback potential there. Oh, but that Amphibious is a good good find there. I mean, if you can get this KV down and keep it down, it, it's pretty darn good against these Gore Engines. However, I struggle to see it surviving. Yeah, not as long as this 5-5 five, five Rough Lightning is on the board. Nope. Goes for the Ooh, Amphib. Ooh, that was a good find. But look, Together we're gonna with... see we're gonna see Tang Tang refill their hand this turn. So long as they... Jaking is on 20 health here. So long as Tang Tang plays the Lendis this turn, no, I think Jaking's in trouble. Possibly deciding not to. Which could turn out to be a pretty fatal mistake. I mean, it will set Jaking up for the Winter Warfare, I suppose, and then you can go for it. You need this KV. Warfare here? I don't know. You need this KV down pre Lendlease, but you can safely put down your KV here. So we Honestly, may see. I the think you, you keep the, the Tang Tang still having HMS Illustrious in the deck. So goes there for could the be an argument offensive. to yeah. keep this. Just goes for it now. Hmm. And yeah, Tang Tang gonna be able to refill their hand. And this is the thing, it's just. A wave of fighters and a hand refill, and then a wave of fighters, and it just goes on and on. They even put down the Wellington and be aggressive with it this turn. Yeah, I mean, what else can you do? Put an Ultra, but it's not doing a lot. Protects against tractor factories, maybe? Yeah, you can just drop a Raw Albacore as well if you need to set it up for the next go. It, it is definitely an option. Hearts wise and board wise and health wise, it looks pretty equal now. But that Brit Air there can just blitz out so much damage suddenly. The J King really, really needs to be aware of that. I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah. What now? Can party sense it, but this is not really helping. Parade into how much? How many? Too many? Two fifty-two k is he having on the deck? Two? I think he already played one. Just thinking if he can maybe parade a fifty-two k. Oh, this is not really helping. Single unit scorched earth. I mean, this is just. It feels like a band aid on a gunshot wound. You know? And finds the Parisi, which is not really helping here. Just more draw. Can he find HMS and then close air support for another 8 damage? I mean oh, you can no, find damage. anything at this point. It's Jaken that needs to find things. Yeah. You can put down the Greyhound, buff it, go for the Albacore as well. Or you can just Albacore cast hit face. But I, I sort of feel like there's value in just hanging up this Ultra to stop the Partisans. Oh, Bloody Sickle. Able to go Bloody Sickle into Naval. 
That is Bar also one more damage too. to his face. So. Yeah. I, I mean, he, he has to do it here. He has to. Yeah, he has no choice. No other choice. Is there any other choice? No. Can't do anything with the partisans. You have to no. kill the Wellington there. He may be thinking about playing one of his 845ths and hammering it, but you have to hope that you're not killed this go. You need to push up to the front line or you are dead. If you don't push up to the front line, this is it. Yeah, I mean, Tang Tang is so close to having lethal here. He has several options. He just needs to find more bombers than he has with Empire Strikes, Grey onto the front line and that Elvico hits face. Yeah. He can also just find HMS or Finest Ooh. Hour. Front line, you've got a front line. I mean, obviously, if you kill your own unit, you heal, which means you're not going to die. But it just, it gives you such a bat running at a time. Oh, I thought he wasn't going to get it. Perfectly planned, perfectly planned. And it is, it is, oh, this means this is not lethal. This no, is no, four no, force it's... in the front line, huh? Oh, it is. It's not quite. What is that card? Oh, it's a Monty. Okay, I thought it was another close yeah. support. It's not. Oh, now it's okay. GG. No, it's lethal. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Tang Tang going 2-0 up against J-King. So J-King uh, going down to the, the third place matches while Tang Tang goes to the finals. And uh, I think Tang Tang really just proving how how consistently strong they are in this game when they're able to take down J-King just so decisively in a 2-0. Very impressive, yeah. So we have a final of Tang Tang versus Artemisia. And third place match, which is J King versus Tiger. Um, I think we're just giving it back to Oli and Darkness, and we see us later, guys. Thank you so much for that, Spoos and Bubbles. Um, man, that was a difficult, difficult series uh, for J King. Um, <laughs> Tang Tang finding what he needed to get it done. Close one in the first match, but man, Brit Air, it's just so difficult to deal with if you're not, you know, decked out with fighters and, and ways to block those bombers. Yeah, you're right, Oli. I I really expected more from this Soviet deck of J King, but experience with one archetype is not everything. As you mentioned, Brit Air is just too dominant just too strong right now well of of course it's it's probably the best deck right now and anybody everybody knows how to play it everybody well not everybody but a lot of people are playing it it's a good idea to tech or uh, to play around it but there's a reason why this is the best deck and sometimes you can't really prepare yourself against one deck yeah i, I learned this the hard way <laughs> yeah and i mean uh, I'm, I'm looking you know when you look across the the deck list as well you, th you think hey you know there's the 52k you know that's it's gonna be a good counter right but it's it's just not cutting it right um and i feel like it's mm -hmm. united we stand as the counter just makes it if, if it had 3 HP and it couldn't just be traded out with a United We Stand, then at least you have some power on the board and you can fire back and, and potentially deal damage over a couple of turns. But in all the times that we've seen it played today, it's basically been trade out like a, a swordfish and then get you know United We Stand back, give your opponent a credit, and they re retain the upper hand, right? Yes. Uh, so just it feels like maybe... At least for Soviets, there need to be some better tools. Um, and I don't know, maybe maybe we need to go back to like um, go back to like the starter decks, you know, start running like blackouts <laughs> or something like that. Burning skies. Burning skies, you know. It's like, uh, yeah, at least uh, there has to be a way to deal with Brit Air, but is there a way to deal with Brit Air while also maintaining a deck that can be competitive against any other deck? That's the question, I feel like. Mm, maybe not for Soviet, but for German, maybe. German Italy control, German Brit control. Those decks got banned pretty regular today. 
and for a good reason, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's take a look at the bracket so that we see our final two matches of today and how the players got there. We have in the third place match, J King seven versus Tiger. And then in the grand finals, you have Artemisia versus Tang Tang. And, uh, you know, Artemisia uh, has lost one game in both of his uh, matchups here. However, Tang Tang has just gone completely undefeated throughout today. So that's going to be an exciting matchup. But uh, yeah, on the on the lower side there, J King, uh, just an unfortunate fall to to Tang Tang. And I mean, I just I can't get over it. I mean, it just it felt like it felt like it was a hopeless situation, right? It just it yeah. didn't matter what he could do. He just could not win with that deck. Well, this this happens, and this happens more frequently with control decks or tech decks. Uh, and this is why some people uh, really want to play more aggro decks, because overall they are more reliable. If you have like 16 1k drops, you are able to find your cards and you are able to play your game. If you are trying to counter something specific, you need to wait until you're getting the right answers. But this is very hard to maintain in, in C CGs that you're a blue out and a specific deck. And this is not working very, very often at least in those tournament settings, because your opponents know how to play around, they know how to play uh, their own deck, and yeah. they're not giving you a lot of time to to wait until you got through half of your deck to be able to find the, the answers for the opponent's match plan. This is, yeah, it's, it's, it's just the nature of, of card games, I believe. You... Often, often I see those those decks, those matches, and even if I love to play those control decks and those counter decks, often those proactive decks are more successful. You can yeah. see this on ladder a lot. Yeah. No, I mean absolutely, and uh, but it's also just like, you know, it 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 also just sometimes feels like the margins are so small, right? Like, it's like, oh, if, if he had one more credit there, he would have been able to completely wipe the board with Winter Offensive, you know, one turn earlier. You know, if he had yeah. two more credits there or, you know, one more credit, he could have partisans then, you know, uh, traded that out. It, it felt, you know, very kind of, it always feels very close, but it's time for us to get into the third place match. No, well, not yet. Um, looks like uh, Tiger jumped into a practice game here um, leading up into the series, but we're just getting the players set up um, for the third place match here. Yeah, but yeah to we need to, right give, to give Jay King a little break. He just finished an, uh, an unfortunate series <laughs> against oh. Tang Tang. Gives a this frustrating man a series. Break. Yeah, yeah gives, gives this man a break, maybe, maybe a couple of minutes. Shouldn't no, take I mean, that long. And it definitely was a frustrating series, and you could see that, you know, as well. Um, it's yeah. also like, um, you know, if if you get if you get German research instead of British research out there, you're able to yeah. take all of those that, things. That was that was so horrifying to watch. Uh, in those matchups, Jack King really wanted the the German better the US uh, research, and he got Britain three times in a row. Yeah. And I, I believe that changed a lot here. Uh, yeah, this, this, was, this was painful to watch. And that's the problem with those control decks. Sure, you, you do have all of your answers. But if you need the 52 or the research right now and you just get it one or two rounds too late or you hit the wrong RNG from Spy Rings or... It's there, there are so many variables. Of course, you have a lot of answers in your deck, but if the the order you you're getting them from your deck is wrong, you are unable to to play the right answers at the right times. And on the other side, there's a very well and polished deck list and a warrior playing this from China 
Yeah. And he's he's just trying to find the most uh, the, the best play, the most optimal play for his deck list. On on the other side, you're trying to to find answers, the right answers out of your deck, but you can't choose. It's still uh, the RNG of drawing cards. Mm, this this is a fundamental problem with control and anti something those those tech lists against decks who have an an very clear gameplay and a win condition. Well, better not one win condition, but multiple win conditions. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, so now we're going to go into the third place match, and uh, there you can see it. All decks are available for this one. This one is a best out of five, so uh, the players will have to win with all three of their decks if they are going to claim the third place. Uh, that means that Jaking is going to have access to his Brit Air deck, um, and uh, yeah, that means we might see a Brit Air mirror here. Um, and it's also going to be very interesting to see if... Oh, yeah, okay, so Jaking brings the Soviet deck first and just runs straight into the Brit Air deck from Tiger. And With that United. Is we st <laughs> yeah, United, I mean we stand watching, uh, sit sitting already in the hand. Well, J King is not having the 52k, so... I mean, maybe I think... maybe this is good for him, not giving him a target. Oh, there, there is the artillery. <laughs> there you go, there's the ramp. Oh, but I mean, I, and oh I my god, that, that, that mulligan from Tiger finds three early units there. But he, he sent away uh, the United we stand. This could be a mistake, looking at the 52k. Um, well, if he has three airplanes and finding two close air supports... Ooh, wait, let's see. Let's see if J King gets impatient here and drops the Scorched Earth immediately, or if he goes for the Spiring or the A45th. I think A45th makes the most sense here. Mm, uh, maybe the Spirings. Because if Tiger is dropping one or two more airplanes, uh, the Scorched Earth will be huge. Remember the first game of J King yeah. today, where his opponent, Tang Tang, no. Who. who well, his first match, uh, turn three came HMS yeah, out, okay. and Jay King hit three, four, four airplanes with Scorched Earth. What was just destroying the entire board and tempo of Brit Air. Yeah, Jay King, I think, was definitely happy to see him play that third aircraft now. And he's, he's just going to hold on to the Scorched Earth, and I like that. Um, t getting rid of the bombers uh, because the bombers are going to be the issue for him. The yes. fighters he can block with his guard units, and he has plenty of guard units. The fighter doesn't really matter against Jack King's lists. The bombers are really, um, really dangerous. So just taking out the bomber, I appreciate that. Yeah, getting more targets now for the Scorched Earth. And, oh, looks like Tiger just goes face, uh, which means that potentially J King gets that 52k to survive. For he an he extra could turn. use Red Banner on the 52k. He's not. He's not doing that. Well, the Red Banner uh, with Partisans or with... Uh, uh, 8k guard unit is very powerful as well and killing this artillery is <laughs> using four credits the entire turn of tiger exactly so it's it's still a valuable trade here bit fire i mean checking has a ton of guards to to deal with that yeah, I really don't think J King needs to uh, worry too much about that. He can drop the 61st Infantry Regiment, uh, move up the 845th, and uh, that's good. He can drop the Briansky Regulars if he wants to have a little bit more credits. Uh, Maybe not not the 61st, first first, but the First Rifles. Yeah. The First Rifles are just so strong. One of the best value cards. I, I believe the best value infantry was... Uh, value unit with four credits 
Looks like Tiger's just going to draw this turn. Uh, he's not going to have enough credits to operate any of his units. He finds a close air support, could go for the buff, but unfortunate placement there. Um, you see that the HQ is in between the Spitfire um, and the other aircrafts yeah. on field, which means that there's not a good way to buff that Spitfire properly. But it's, now, you know, this yeah. is a free trade for Jaking if he wants into that Albacore. Just killing the bomber, and yeah, as you mentioned, this placement of the Spitfire is really, really unfortunate. Not being able to to uh, use the close air support, the most efficient. Well, this this changed not not a long time ago. The close air support, and some players still need to adjust to this new mechanic because now it really matters where you put your airplane. Yeah, and I feel like now we're seeing a board state that Jaking has been gunning for or aiming to establish against Brit Air with this deck pretty much from the get-go, right? He has managed to push a couple of units into the front line. He has kept some units on board. He is now starting to cause issues for Tiger because uh, he, he basically has a pretty much full-up support line here and isn't able to play units and operate and do everything that he wants within a single turn. So now Tiger has some decisions to make. You know, does he want to spend his turn attacking with the Spitfire? Does he want to take one of those gladiators and sacrifice them? What does he want to do to play out of this? Mm, shelling would be another idea. Just sending back the guard and preparing close air support. Looks nice, but this would be much better with buffing the Hurricane as well. Well, Jacking now has a lot of units fa facing him. The entire support line is full. Yeah, ah. but so he's got the Brianska regulars, so that's a very easy way to guard up. He, he also just, has the US research. The US research is very nice against Brit here, and just killing the Hurricane, the most dangerous unit here, is very good for Jaking. With another. Uh, with another half, this would have been way harder to maintain. Now the pressure feels like on Tiger. Yeah. Because I... the the two uh, small units are buffed. Yeah, they are two four swordfish, but the four operation costs are just blocking clogging the support line. Yeah, you don't want to use them. You 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 honestly don't want to use them. It's it's basically not even worth it for the two damage that they're going to provide. Unless no. it's in a, in a few in 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 kind of a few different situations and he's he's also waiting. I mean, he didn't finish finish off the Brianska regulars last turn because that would have meant that uh, his Raf lightning would have taken three damage. Um I really like the KV here and I I suspect that Jay King is playing around Ultra. <laughs> uh, Ultra yeah, he right. is. He was thinking about Red Banner, uh, he hovered over it, but just playing the KV-1 and attacking was wisely playing around Ultra here. Well, with United we stand, we, Tiger can finish the Bryanx Irregulars and close air support <laughs> is a huge buff. But for operation cost is still super slow. I mean, he can attack with one so swordfish, so rough lightning, and is it united we stand? I mean, surely he wants to start getting rid of that KV one relatively quickly as well. Mm, he could have started to go phase as well, pressuring a lot. Maybe this wouldn't be uh, smart as well. Like eight damage, putting Jaking down to eleven, having some airplanes, some blitz opportunities. By by this play, by this move, Tiger is going into the control kind of gameplay. He's he's not really super aggressive. He's trading effectively, but do you really want that against? Jaking playing Soviet. No, you do not. 
Um, I think if you play the slow methodical game against J King, um, when J King's on Soviets, and especially once he has an established board presence like he does right now, I think that's a battle that you lose most of the time. But I mean, Tiger's not out of this as of yet, right? He's no. got the Monty, he's got the shelling, so he can get two turns of delay at least there. He's got the uh, HMS Illustrious in hand, so uh, and the Wellington, so he's able to quickly put out three bombers. He's gonna have Empire Strikes as well, so he could also really quickly wipe the board and start dealing a ton of damage to the face of J King as well. Now we just need to see him play it at the appropriate moment, right? Um, and that's going to be the, the tough one. It looks like he just wants to go for it all right now. And that's going to just give J King a perfect Scorched Earth opportunity next turn as well. Oh, the Scorched Earth opportunity. I, I was thinking about Partisans maybe, but you can't use this if your entire support line is clocked. I mean, J King can kill his own... Uh, 50 second K with bloody sickle to to make some moves. I mean, there are a ton of options for Jaking like right now. Yeah, he could just... he could kill his his artillery, steal the Wellington, and upgrade it. Right, is there an eight credit British unit? So I'm I'm thinking. You definitely want to save the partisan combo. He also has the has the US research there so that he can basically protect his HQ at any point that he wants as well. So I don't think J King is in a ton of issue a ton of trouble right now. As long as he's trying to steal Wellington with partisans and upgrade it with red banner, because that's not possible. I just checked that. There's no don't you try, won't you just, uh, isn't it better to try and just go for a uh, two, two for one or, or like a, a two unit trade there? Try and like grab the Wellington, run it into that four or five gladiator and then yeah. bloody sickle. Um, and I think, I think that's what will give you the most power. But with, yeah, ju just killings is, would be better. Uh, Jaking. <laughs> you can see Tiger, he's just waiting to play shelling. He's just ready. Yeah. Oh. Wonder if we're oh, getting some defense here. Bloody Sickle, his own unit, playing another artillery. There we go. Tiger shelling. Look looked like he auto queued that. <laughs> yeah. But he's only able to attack the HQ with one. With one little, ta um, with one little gladiator, checking, making some more space to do something. Finding Sendai regiment here, so he's able to get rid of one unit. Ah, uh, with Sendai regiment, he could also use partisans to steal in gladiator, sacrificing this into the swordfish, or. Another choice would be protecting his HQ with a research. There are tons of options for J King. I think I think J King also still has two eight forty fifth, uh, and he has all his hammers as well. He hasn't drawn pretty much any of the cards that you know can be considered dead within the Brit Air matchup. So. I think that's also a positive. That that gives him some potential healing. I guess the negative is that he hasn't found the engineer, so he hasn't been able to reap the benefits of healing kind of throughout the game. But it looks yeah. like he has a, a lot of options here. Kitty Hawk, so many, so many units for our Tiger. Kitty Hawk can just kill the artillery. The bomber can't go face, so he could kill, start killing guards. But there are plenty of more guards. Yeah, there's plenty more guards, and I mean, keep in mind the operating cost is still four on those units. Um, so 
Yeah, it's it's a lot of operation cost. Is that late into the game? No, he can't attack the HQ smoke screen. I I personally would activate activate ultra every single turn. Yeah. Well, Tiger is is trading efficient those units and pressuring a lot. Well, now Jaking has the opportunity to partisan. Wait, he can partisan, kill the bomber, and upgrade the unit. Yes. Well, no. Well, the four the four operation cost is hurting Jaking in the progress. But without a single bomber left, the second Paracy is not looking that dangerous. Jaking. So six. I mean, he can also just run it straight into the gladiator and trade it out. No, no. Um, the he, the swordfish will lose the buff of the greyhound. Oh yeah. As yeah, you yeah. can see. So it's not traded. Oh, maybe Jaking miscalculated that, or... Maybe, but he put up another guard, so uh, there are only fighters left, and <laughs> if Tiger is trading, he will lose a lot of units. So maybe Jaking didn't miscalculate it. Maybe he did. Now you, now you just pass, right? If you're Tiger. So nobody takes damage from the Priyanski regulars. Well, he can activate Ultra. He could also buff another plane and finish the other. <laughs> oh my god, look at all those guards. 61st, 61st, Taka uh, Takasagi, and 272nd. That is a lot of guards. Um, and those fighters are not going to have an easy time getting through anything at this point. Well, Jacking here is activating the destruction effect by sacrificing the Branks Irregulars into the Greyhound. Nice move here. Mm. Yeah, I, I would just love Jacking dropping the Takazaki Regiment and 61st. Not, not activating Ultra. And maybe the Takazaki Regiment. Oh, the land lease. There comes the card draw of Brit Air. This is just brutal. Well, ne next turn, Tiger can drop the Alba Core and the Empire Strikes, leading to a lot of AoE damage. Still, Jaking is holding. Pretty well for now. Yeah, there's a there's a Sentai. Um is still there to take care of any bomber that might come out. United we stands against the uh, irregulars. I think it's primarily just bombers that are the threat to J King now. If he's able to deal with any of the bombers that come out, then he's in a pretty good spot. It's kind of risky, but I would Ooh. like to see the 272nd guard upgraded into two Joseph Stalins. Yes, that's what I was thinking as well. Because there, there's no ultra right now from Tiger, and Jakey can, Jakey can see that there are no floating credits. So just, just using the red banner, exactly. And there are some massive tanks. And there was a Sexton, uh, which is pretty much the only good card that Tiger could have drawn against that play from J-King. But he still has to contend with the other Josef Stalin. He has no good way of dealing with that one. So um looks like he wants to push the fighter some... into the front line to, to prevent Joseph Stalin uh, from, from destroying the HQ. Yeah, but I mean, he's gonna have to he's gonna have to supply so many fighters or so many units into the right. front line to block this over time. It's the hammer. J King is just he, gonna get rid of it. He can use Paracy with finest aura onto the bomber and instant kill. 
the second Joseph Stalin. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. And another move with sacrificing the the swordfish would have been possible too. Now J King is in an awkward position. He just sent eyes. Just send eyes send eyes uh... out of the core, getting rid of the bomber and of the pinza effect. Yeah, killing the sexton. Great, great move. The best possible move here. And now he he needs to slowly get through those frontline fighters. <laughs> frontline fighters. Let's take a look at some deck sizes. So J King has 16 cards left and Tiger has 11. So J King also has a significant card advantage here. Mm, because of the massive card draw, like land lease, mobilization, etc. Ooh, rough lightning. That's one way of getting rid of a Joseph Stalin. Um, not a smart way of getting rid of Joseph Stalin. No, oh, no, no, no. Because <laughs> it copies it. <laughs> I totally forgot. Uh, getting rid of the Takazagi is probably the best option, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's been a long time since I played against the Joseph Stalin. Okay. But I mean, now things are starting to get dangerous, right? Empire Strikes, some damage sneaking through here and there, but that is kind of huge. What's under the, the Sendai again? It's the Albacore, right? Albacore, yeah. yeah. So it's it's playing with fire. He he can run up the Yosef Stalin and kill the he can, Yes. But he can't... But... Oh, it, 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 it's lethal. <laughs> it's, lethal. <laughs> it's lethal. We were too much focused on 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 the <laughs> airplane. <laughs> I was, all, yeah, we were thinking yeah, about it was twelve the... damage exactly, and clearing the front line as well. Turns out that if you deal enough damage to the enemy HQ, the game just ends. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Oli. See, words of wisdom. I, uh, I'm taking bookings in my DMs right now for some cards lessons. I'll teach you uh, high-level strats, like bringing your opponent's HQ down below zero HP. Yeah, you should you should start like an online class to, <laughs> for, for uh, cards people, uh, teaching them the way of beating players in tournaments. Yeah, how, how to not be able to count to seven uh, how to, how to miss lethal? I, I got it all, dude. I got a catalog. Yeah, this is like the, the beginner's course. Count to seven. <laughs> all right. The now... end game ends when your opponent's HQ is destroyed. Are it just two United Restands from J King? Well, he's holding one and getting. The Red Devils having the pill and the Wibblewind against Red Air. This doesn't look that bad. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Um, looks pretty good, yeah. He just pops the PIR as well. I like that, honestly. Not just because the Wibblewind in the support line is doing nothing, but the Pur is constantly adding value, and value onto the Red Devils is like amazing value. Yeah, now now you got a decision to make as well if you're Tiger, right? Um, do you push up and contest the front line, which is basically sacrificing uh, your Greyhound? And I mean, you're you're sacrificing it for the hopes of the PAR attacking into it so that you can United We Stand next turn, but it's just going to be the Red Devils attacking into it, I guess, and it's going to be taken out with a United We Stand. I would Probably. expect. Yeah, I'm expecting that too. But, well, this opens the Red Devils getting destroyed. Yeah. With, with United We Stands. It's three credits because of the ability of the Red Devils. If you target this with an order or with a combat attack, you need plus one credit. So Tiger now, is keeping up with the Rams. But now Jaking has a really good turn here, right? He can drop the combat engineers and he can push up the Whirlwind. And he can even push up the PAR as well. Yeah. And that means that anything the Tiger is going to play next turn. Uh, it's going to be pinned when it comes into play, right? Akex playing very conservative here, killing the Greyhound. Well, he's playing around close air support. This is 
smart. But allows Tiger to kill the, gra the Wibblewind. And of course, Jacking is not having the pearl in the front line. What hurts a little bit. So is Tiger also playing the Albacore, pinning the pearl? I would expect that, yeah. Hmm. Now Jaking really wants to find some card draw. He really wants to find some card draw. A Sherman would be nice. Sherman would be uh, fantastic for Jaking now. I'm looking at that Stars and Stripes as well, and I mean, him having Stars and Stripes puts just puts additional value in, in maintaining the front line and trying to... Oh, that's good. That, that was a nice draw for him. Finding the 32nd, allowing him to spam the board a little bit. But does he want to spam the board? Ooh. Hey, he, he, needs to, he needs to hold the stars and stripes here. If he's playing two 32nd infantry regiments, Tiger is going to play the Monty. And J King will be blocked for an entire turn after that. So but would it be it, crazy? It, would it be crazy to play the half track, a 32nd? and then push up the combat engineers? I would love that. Because I'm thinking, like, if you're holding Stars and Stripes in hand, you just kind of want to try and bait Tiger into deploying a full support line so that you can just wipe it. Yeah, this is definitely an option. But retreating the Albacore and Kitty Hawk, both options are horrible. <laughs> So ho holding the house trick for no, I like that. Yep. Oh, but Empire Strikes, that's a board clear right there. Oof. This board clear is massive. Holds on to it, though. Well, with more bombers, it's getting more powerful. Tiger here can play HMS, close air support, and just trading. Yeah, but he's getting baited because that backline is going to get wiped. Even with close air support, it's going to get wiped. With or without? Well, without close air support, he's able to kill both non smoke screen units. What is perfectly fine. If he's playing close air support. No, actually, Ollie. He can attack that and go into the front line, saving the life of two airplanes. Three, actually. He's not doing it. No. He could have saved the life of three airplanes. Yeah, but unfortunately, he just ran headfirst into a massive Stars and Stripes. And now there's a 6-2 PIR in the front line staring him down. The Raph Lightning can buy him a turn, though. Um, but that might just become like back and forth tennis here with the half track throwing it back. Um, yeah, and, and Jaking is having two units moving into his front. Exactly. You can only retreat. The Sherman. I would. I would like J King move, uh, seeing him moving one unit to the front, playing the Sherman, drawing first, and then maybe retreating the Rough Lightning again. But no, J King is choosing to thin his deck by playing the 32nd infantry first to prevent not drawing with Sherman into the, the last 32nd infantry regiment. What is also very smart. Yeah, Monty gonna pin everything. And I wonder, do you do you just go face with the lightning here? I Looks guess. Like uh, Empire Strikes is killing all of those chocolate boys, and you only need one well, bomber to, to kill the Pur as well. But now J King is establishing a massive board. Wow. Yeah, and th those, those uh, PIRs in the front line, 9 5. <laughs> it's so huge. And Tiger is not having any bombers, but two Empire Strikes. He, he needs to find. 
So oh, I'm kind Schilling. of Shelling will buy him a turn, but what he doesn't know is that there's another uh, we can do it waiting in J King's hand. And that Shelling is going to give him a big false sense of security because it's gonna, he's going to think, you know, yeah, I'm going to be able to, to hold him off here. But uh, J King can drop a Panzer 35T, run that into the front line next turn, then drop another 32nd Infantry and do what we can do it. And that medical battalion is also going to heal up all the pings coming from the, the Shelling as well. So. Not well, the med great. medical battalion heals at the end if J King chooses to to play. We can do it. Yeah, okay. one damage is healed and only two additional damage is applied to those units. That is correct. So I wonder what what J King chooses here. Actually, maybe it's it's not the the smartest decision to to consider. We can do it. We can sacrifice the Panzer thirty five into rough lightning, killing it with United We Stand, and then killing the remaining Gladiator with the Wind. I really like this. I really like just getting the Whirlwind into the front line, making it massive in terms of HP. And yeah, yeah. Massive Whirlwind in the front line is huge against Brit Air. Yeah, and wow. <laughs> this is not the hand that Tiger was looking for. Albacore, Swordfish, okay, at least allows him to set up for three damage. Nope, he just bails. He can't survive. He can't survive the next turn. There we go. J King takes a 2 0 lead here against Tiger and is only one win away from securing himself third place in this Officer Club Championship. Uh, this, this time, J King's matchup, his, his lineup really worked out. Because you see those tech cards against Brit, like the Wibblewind, like the Retreat, like uh, in Soviet, the K, uh, 52K, those tech cards against Brit Air, now in this third place match, he's able to, to get the right answers at the right time and beating Brit Air two times in a row. And now it's his, his turn. He is playing Brit Air. You know what? And I'm gonna call it. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You you call it? I was just gonna say this is the this is the matchup of the day. This is a cup of coffee versus a cup of tea. Oh. Well, checking. Tea will win. I I I call it the tea. <laughs> I'm a tea person. But I totally like. I cut you off saying a super, you know, uh, important thing or, or insightful thing about the games, just so I can make a, a little joke about tea versus coffee. Are you more like a tea person or a coffee person? Coffee, coffee all the way. Um, I do, however, think that the synergy between, um, you know, having the cup of tea and playing Britain is going to win out here. Um, the cup of coffee yeah. feels a little bit out of place here. You know, um, Bubbles is probably yelling that it's blasphemy back in uh, the green room here. I can see him nodding to your statement. Absolutely. Well, it, it looks very even right now. J King was able to get an Greyhound into the front, finishing Gladiator with United We Stands. But his Greyhound is at 2 HP and this allows Tiger to finish that Greyhound with United We Stands. Although this is not very credit fashion, so... Exactly. I was, I was just about to say that, that Albacore makes things a little bit diff difficult unless you are willing to just drop it without utilizing that deployment effect. But it might just be better to, yeah, save it. Float the credits. Taking would have that had the answer. <laughs> well, Rough Lightning would be probably the better answer. Wait, is he going to overdraw next turn? Yeah, he's full yeah. of fans. But neither of them have anything to do but to draw at this point. <laughs> no one credit unit either. I mean, Tiger <laughs> could, could use Monty to not overdraw, but I feel like Monty is so valuable. He needs to keep it. Gladiator is not a big loss, I believe. I mean, now you just uh, establish the Spitfire, and you could you could even drop the second pair of C with it. I mean, yeah, why not? I mean, do you want to do it? So the second parasy, 
I feel like he needs to hold it. For example, with HMS, Blitz, Bomber, Second Parasy, kill any unit. It's too powerful, I believe. Rev Lightning this card on the other side is not not what you are wanting here. This was the answer. Like like the answer. So now is, is Tiger gonna drop the Spitfire and double closer support it? And he's like, playing Monty. 100 percent. There's no way he he's allowing J King to attack with Fury. Well, J King has an air unit, so Tiger's Spitfire is not getting Fury, but plus two, plus two. And of course, he needs to play Monty. Dropping Albacore could be an option. Ollie, there we go. There we go. Here we go. Second Paracy <laughs> with HMS. I called it. Ooh, look at this. Uh, this new art from, from HMS. I didn't know HMS is giving you the gladiators with a new art. Well, if you have that's... the upgraded art and have it toggled on, then yeah, yes. That's cool. Well, yeah, you called it. That was that was absolutely true. That second pair C, you know, worth holding on to. And that turns out extremely well here for J King. And now he has, uh, looks like he will have free reign to attack the HQ with a 6 6 Fury Fighter next turn, dealing 12 damage to face. I can drop two bombers and the Empire Strike, but this will only kill the second pair C. It's three damage, AOE. It, it's not killing anything. Well, from, from those airplanes. And Jacking yeah. is having so much damage. 12, 14, 16. I mean, technically, Tiger is not dead. But Jacking <laughs> Could just drop Empire Strikes, killing all of those bombers and dealing three more damage. Or using United We Stand and Trade. Bo both is very, very, uh, possible here. I think this is the, the safer line here for J King. Because, I mean. I what does he have to worry about at this point, right? It's an HMS Illustrious second pair C combo. It's uh, a Raft Lightning that we've seen already, one of them discarded. Um, it's, you know, uh, Tiger finding a Sexton. Uh, what else is there to, to worry about if you're Jaking? I Ooh. don't agree with this. He, he should have killed uh, the Bomber. Yeah. Now the pair C is killing his. Hurricane and the Wellington is able to trade the bomber. From all the potential move, I believe J King made a mistake here. Yeah, but it's, it's still looking fine for him. A little bit surprising that he chose to do to go that line, especially since he just had a free trade with the swordfish. Yeah. So... But he is he is he is very very close to having what he needs to finish this game but finding that extra five damage especially if ultra manages to catch maybe you know a mobilization or that empire strikes it, it could become dicey you know yeah it could become dicey well wellington and two close air supports are able to trade a lot. The Rough Lightning and the Greyhound. He, he really should drop the Swordfish. To have an additional unit. Oh, but the Greyhound! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I will... Yeah. Two, two close air supports are enough. Yeah. And Tiger is able 
to clear the entire board of J-King. And all of a sudden, massive turnaround here from Tiger. I mean, sure. Oh, Wellington, that's going to be it, right? Wellington plus Empire Strikes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. There we go. J-King finds what he needs and secures himself third place in a swift 3-0 here Ooh. in the Officer Club Championship. Tiger fortunately exits the tournament in third place, not finding success with his Brit Air deck. And uh, J-King finally, you know, finding the answer to Brit Air, <laughs> having struggled against it a few times. Uh, today, um, but yeah, it, it was such a forward and backward. J King losing a lot against J uh, Brit Air and now securing three wins in a row against Brit Air, the consider considerable best deck right now in cards. That was that that was huge. Although he struggled a little bit at the end, yeah, uh, to to prevent him. From well, of course, he, he's the world champion. He's arguably the best player in cards, but everyone is making a mistake uh, from time to time. Sometimes mistakes are mattering a lot. Sometimes uh, you are able to to correct them, and Jay King did here. So congratulations on his third place, uh, third placement here, and. Congratulations to Tiger as well. It, it's nice to see him back into cards. He's he's not like completely constant, uh, being there all the all the time. But it's it's nice to see him coming back uh, every yeah, time, I, like every couple of months. I agree. And I mean, w when we went through the player profiles as well, you could see that Tiger was, um, you know, had by far the fewest amount of games um, out of anyone here today. So. I mean, let's not take anything away from Tiger. He had a tremendous showing and making it all the way into the third place match here in the OCC is a tremendous feat. And I do agree with you. I hope we get to see more of him in the coming months uh, that he sticks with it and starts uh, challenging more and more for that title. But I also want to highlight, I feel like we just saw three matches where Brit Air drew, I felt a little bit differently from the matches that we've seen today, right? You know, he wasn't finding a ton of his one-cost uh, bombers or fighters. He wasn't finding his early game effectively. And this allowed J-King to establish a board both in the Soviet game and in the U.S. game. And then, you know, just J-King had the superior play here in the final Brit Air mirror matchup. Um, so it shows you that Brit Air is also dependent on draws. And if you're not able to find exactly what you need in the early game, like we have seen earlier today, right? where it just felt like it was the perfect hand, and the perfect hand Brit Air is almost impossible to beat. So um, kudos to J-King, congratulations to him. And I mean, what is there more to say about it? I mean, I feel like I feel like he played it extremely well. I feel like he finally found that success that he needed against the Brit Air. But if Tiger would have drawn more aggressive early game especially in that soviet uh, in that soviet game if he had yeah. united we stand to get rid of the 52k snowball a little bit more i think we could have been looking at a very different series the soviet game was incredible close not even in the early game where uh, where tiger was not finding the, the good opening he wanted to but also in the middle and end game as as you <laughs> we both didn't saw the lethal <laughs> there because we were thinking about uh, what, what was under the, the Sendai Regiment, how is J-King able to survive, how can he how can J-King kill both, both airplanes because he only could kill one and both uh, would be leading to three damage and finishing J-King off. Uh, th this was how close this match wa was. J-King was just in time after 15 turns or something, able to to kill him with exactly lethal before he would have lost to exactly lethal. It's ex especially this match was super close, and this the 3 0 looks very dominant for J King. He was able to beat Brit Air three times in a row. Yeah, this this shows that J King is 
a brilliant player being able to beat the strongest deck three times in a row. But uh, it felt more like 55% to 45%, honestly. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. And I mean, I think at least, um, if anything, J King can have like a little moral victory, right? Having beaten Brit Air three times in a row. Uh, I, I feel like he's probably just like, yeah, finally, you know, <laughs> screw that yeah. deck. Um, so. But all right, let's take a look at the bracket for uh, the last time here um, for us. Uh, let's look at that. There you can see it. J-King 7-3-0 against Tiger in the bronze match. That only leaves one match yet to be played, and that is Tang Tang versus Artemisia, um, two of the most kind of successful Chinese players in the past couple of months. Um, Facing off in the finals, who's going to take it? Well, it's all up for grabs. We'll throw it over to Bubbles and Spoos to take you through the finals. Hello. Thank you. What a what a thrilling series there. Um, it, it was a nail biter, especially that Brit Air game. I, I thought J King had her just got it out of his reach, but then it finds his way back in. Quite the series. I, I hope our finals are just as, if not more, exciting. Um, how are you feeling about it, Spooz? You ready? You ready to go? Because personally, I'm just rearing. I'm, I'm ready, very ready. Um, you are on mute as well. Oh. It's not like you warned me, right? I mean, I, I, I pressed the shortcut, but I was not in Discord, so it did not work, yeah. But yeah, I'm absolutely ready for the finals here. Tang Tang taking on Artemisia. I think if I remember correctly, Artemisia was also in the finals of the last OCC, or was it the cards open? I think he was in the finals of one of the recent tournaments. So really fighting his way through the field again and finding himself in the finals again. But yeah, he's fighting no other than Tang Tang. Back-to-back um, -back season winner, I guess. I, I think one of the... Yeah, one of the best players at the moment. I think... If somebody can beat Jake in consistently, then it's Tang Tang. And yeah, he's in the finals again. It's really, really going to be a great final. Uh, yeah, what, what to expect from it, Bubbles? Yeah, I, I'm very much looking forward to it. It's uh, two really, really strong players. Um, and you see the nations here. It is worth noting, it's best of five, so no bans. Tang Tang bringing USA, Germany and Brit, and Artemisia bringing Brit, Japan and Germany. Um, I want to see this Japan deck. I, I want to see it, you know, played while we're getting to cast it instead of just sitting here watching other people do it because it looks very interesting. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing that one the most. Uh, I don't have too many big expectations other than Tang Tang absolutely, you know, killing it. He's been killing it all day and he's been killing it all the time lately. But that doesn't mean Artemisia isn't able to take them down. Artemisia is also a very strong player. I think it's going to be a good one, um, but I am leaning towards Tang Tang taking it, to be totally honest, just because of how dominant they are at the moment. Yeah, and it w I think it will also be the first time that somebody wins that I just tipped on at the beginning of the event. So I'm not sure how good Tang Tang's odds are here. Um, but yeah, I think I, I also I, I just said it at the beginning, and I think I stick with it. Tang Tang might have the advantage here, maybe even deck-wise, although I'm not really sure how good he is, he is against Artemisia's triple aggressive aggressive decks. Um, yeah, I think it could go either way. If if Artemisia finds a good deck, a good start with the Hummer deck, it could be a fast one. But yeah, if Tang Tang just established a good board against it, it could also go the other way. I think both players can easily win this. And like you say, there there is a possibility you've cursed Tang Tang, which is, you know, it's not just possible, it's even likely that by, by saying you think they're going to win, you've cursed them. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they'll be, you know, chasing after you if they lose this. Um, but yeah, so. we're just, we're waiting for the players to get into the match. Uh, it, it shouldn't take too long, but obviously both these players do rain from China and it's very late in China at the moment. So they do have a little bit of leeway to sort things out on their end because it is in the early AMs, for us, it's a lovely, you know, 5.30 and 6.30 respectively. You know, it's sort of that cool evening where it says not too much going on yet. It's very nice and mellow. Um, but over there, it is very late. Um, yeah. Are there, looking at deck matchups here, what are you expecting these players to bring in game one? Do you expect this, this Hummer deck to come out instantly? Do you expect both players just to go straight for their Brit decks? What, what are you expecting here? 
Good question. I think for Tank Tank, you probably go with German Italy control first, because I think this is the best matchup against the general lineup of Artemisia. And yeah, if you're Artemisia, you probably just, I don't know, probably go for Brit US, because it's proven to be one of the strongest decks in the tournament. Although J King just beat it three times in the Battle 4 rank 3, really impressive. So his lineup kind of proved that it is also good against Brit Air. Um, yeah, but I think it's just the mind games again, right? So what do you think? What is your opponent bringing? So you might decide what you are bringing. I don't know. I, I think I, if I would be Tang Tang, I'd just go with German Italy. And if I would be Artemisia, I'd just go with Brit Air. And on the flip side, sort of looking at these decks here, what deck do you think the players are going to struggle with the most? Because obviously it's a best of uh, best of five. You've got three decks and you have to win with all three. It's very possible you just get clogged on this one deck and you can't win with it. We saw J King, you know, going against Tiger, beating this Brit Air deck three times in a row. Uh, and it's very possible to get clogged on one. Because looking at Artemisia, I'm sort of leaning towards it being the Japan deck. I'm curious how you feel about it with the Japan deck and which deck stands out from Tang Tang, if any at all. Oh, the Japan deck from Artemisia is just the standard Faint Retreat Jaguar deck, right? Yeah. I, honestly, I cannot really see a deck that is standing out there and being one of the decks that is not performing that well. We know that the Hummer deck can just explode in the early turns so much, so you can, I think you can win any matchup if your opponent is not having an early response. And yeah, the Jaguar matchup I think can also win. It might be hard if this is running into the German Italy control, because this, this deck has a lot of ways to heal back up, and that is what is Jaguar not really liking. Um, yeah, if there is one deck I have to pick from Artemisia, it might be the German, the Japan German aggro deck. And we see Tang Tang with the Brit Air deck and Artemisia with the Hummer deck. So for those who just tune in now, the finals, even as the third place match, are played a best of five. So everyone, every player has to win with all of their decks. So you have to get three wins to be the maze. OCC champion. Yeah. We see Tang Tang going with oh. the turn one gladiator. And look at this. This is the, what you want to have, right? You have 56 Vega Regiment. You have the combined arms. So this is like the perfect start for Artemisia here. And I'm pretty... Oh, no. Okay, this in the front line will not do too much. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed how some players just manage to always get the perfect starting hand with this deck. Like when I play this, I have stuff like, I don't know, Henschel, Henschel, Combined Arms, in Enigma in my hand. <laughs> so I don't know how they're doing it, but this Hummer in the front end there, with Fury and, and 3 attack, is already really, really scary. That's just the sort of perfect start for Artemisia. Being able to clear both the Greyhound and the Gladiator from Tang Tang. We do see the UWS come out and take out the support. However, it's still a very scary situation, and even if you get this second UWS off, you're still in a really, really bad spot. I'd almost like to uh, like to see this Henschel possibly come out and buff, just to keep it out of this, this rain. What are we going for? Okay, now gets good United we stand, but there's just another Panzer II waiting in the front line, in the support line to get buffed. They do find some draw. I'd have liked to see the convoy out the convoy come out before the United we stand just as good practice draw before you uh before you do your action Hummer, now Henschel. you may see the Hummer come out and then the Henschel as well um could also you, drop Heinkel Henschel maybe you can Heinkel Henschel the issue is this Wrath in hand is going to uh bounce anything that's buffed so really, if you want to buff, if you're gonna buff, you want to move it to the front line straight away. So you can go Hummer, you can go Henschel, and you can move this buffed up Panzer to the front line. I I don't think you want to buff something and keep it in your support line. Sure, we may makes also sense, yeah. we may also see just no buff this turn and just go for the unit spam, and then that gives you plenty of options to buff and instantly attack next turn, which I I, I think is very smart. You you want to buff when you can instantly take advantage of it. If you're not too worried about your units dying to something like AoE, then then that's the way to do it. Yeah, it's just so much so much more value when you get the buff on the Hummer because it's just double the amount of damage, and there's really no need to 
put in the buff this turn because you couldn't attack with the Panzer II anyways. I mean, you could, but then you would only have the Ange Pencil on board. So, good turn here. That means that the Hummer is just getting another plus three, plus three. Oh my oh lord. Oh my this, lord. This para is wow. You just para down, you trade for free. Thinking about putting on the Hensho instead. I think you I think you put it on the Panzer. Yeah, the, the, the problem is your Panzers are really, really valuable in this matchup. Like when you run around out of Panzers, your Henschel and Combined Arms are kind of useless. So there's there are arguments to just keep the Panzer II where it is and don't use that. I don't think you buff until you can use it. I I, I stand by it. Yeah, yeah, I buffing. completely agree with that. Yeah. Especially when you know that your opponent is having rough lightning in the deck. Now you could go for the spoils. You could also go for the frontline pay. Now, HMS is really mm. what you're looking for here if you're tank tank. Finds the Blitzkrieg, which puts a lot of pressure on tank tank to find their way out of this very quickly. Ooh, the Ultra can help. Raf and Ultra may be the way forward. However, it's, the Hummer, still, right? it's yeah. yeah, you bounce the Hummer. But then still, Artemisia is going to be able to push up that infantry and buff this Panzer in the front line. Considering going for the Greyhound instead, but really I feel like you need to put up this Ultra. A little bit risky. Not quite lethal. However, you put down the 35T, you put down the Henschel, you buff it plus three plus three, and then you can just run amok with this. This Henschel. Five, five. Raiding it off. Look at this. Setting up the, uh, the Blitzkrieg. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem with the deck, right? Like, you have all these buff tanks and... That Paracy combined Ooh, with Blitzkrieg. But the Swordfish! Oh my god. Swordfish into Empire Strikes wipes the board. Wait, Able to clear it? and take the front line as well. Puts up I just the Ultra. The swordfish. Yeah, yeah, okay. Put up the Ultra. I thought he found the HMS Illustrious. <laughs> no, no, I was no, thinking, no. why is there only one Swordfish? But... but look, with this Ultra up, Artemisia is going to try for the Blitzkrieg. But it's going to get countered. Holy moly. That... And finds the Monty as well. Tang Tang is swinging this game around out of nothing. Crawling back is dark. running no Enigmas. No draw at all. And then a Mosquito as well. Able to remove more of the board. And this is just looking worse and worse for Artemisia. This went from an easy win. They're just being completely destroyed. Those are the Monty first. Smart play. Able to Mosquito. Put down the cast and double trade. He could have double traded if he wanted by targeting the unit in the support line instead, but I don't think it matters too much. And I think oh. that's game. Yeah. Tang Tang with an unbelievable turnaround. Finding the bomber they needed, going for the Empire Strikes and just wiping the board. Did not expect that, honestly. I mean, Brit Air has some chances, but you also need your, your, to find your tools early in the game. And just found them perfectly. And that gives Tang Tang the 1-0 lead now. Meaning that he can no longer play Brit Air now. Has to choose between US Poland mid-range or Legion stack or German Italy control. And looks like... Going for German Japan. Italy. Yeah, against the German Italy. Now this is a, for me this feels like a classic. You know, it's the the ultimate aggro versus the ultimate anti aggro. And a, a very poor hand for the anti aggro here. Oh yeah, what the frick? Schwalbe King Tiger? Not really yeah. what you want to have. 
989 can do a little bit, but that's just turn four. Good for Tank Tank here that there is no Befehlswagen for Artemisia. But still, oh my, okay, the Flam Panzer might help. But two more one drops waiting to go to the front line. <laughs> Look at this boo. Boo. <laughs> I really like this emote. The Flam Panzer might just be enough to keep them in it. But I mean, Tang Tang looked completely defeated last game and crawled it back out of nowhere. So I'm curious to see if we can watch them do the same thing. Just checking if Tang Tang is playing root out in the deck. Yeah, double root out. This would be a good top deck to find here. Goes for the infantry. Possibly thinking about getting Man Ostrom. You know, you get a Man Ostrom off the top of your deck, you're able to start trading and healing. Oh, King Tiger and Schwalbe. That is. That was a really bad starting hand. Needs either a Man Ostrom or a Root Out. Finds the Sudden. It's not good enough for now. Can go for the flam panzer and trade, but this board is starting to look really scary. And we're gonna see a 4 4 tank rushing up, finds the signal as well. This just looks scarier and scarier now. Yeah, tank tank really needs to find a monostrum soon so he can play it on that big five attack unit there. You hit face once and then you trade and you can spawn in your beef wagon as it moves up. Just like that and then you also you pin this this guy. This is some beautiful play here from Artemisia. Playing beautifully around the Boheffer's wagon. What? That was my... I, w I thought I'd go for it. I thought I'd go for it, Swiss. Uh, nice try, nice try. <laughs> was not too far off. The beef wagon. <laughs> It's for the sudden strike. Don't Clear the front line, but it's just. Else. Oh. Just says, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. Let's do match number three. Could have waited to try and find the man rostrum, but you know, I, I sort of respect the, the. I'm done with this. Did we not say that this was probably the worst matchup there? And I, yeah. I thought it might be, but Artemisia just showing a, a really beautiful star on Jagro and Tang Tang having just an absolute bricked hand. Yeah, did find was... like the Flam Panzer oh. and the Sudden Strike, but found them off curve. What you really want is on curve. Yeah, and also no root out in hand and Artemisia no root, just no Manos, so many one drops. No oh. Nasha. Straight into match number three here. It's 1-1 one, one currently. And Tang Tang keeps sticks on the uh, German deck. And Artemisia bringing the Hummer deck again. Not as terrifying as that overhand here from Artemisia. Oh, and look at this Tang Tang with Sudden Strike and Flam Panzer in hand. Way better now. And he also has Bologna Regiment. This could be a way better. Outcome here for Tang Tang. It's certainly looking like the sort of hand you want, especially for this matchup. I'm thinking yeah. maybe Tang Tang expected to have this matchup again, and that's why they brought this uh, deck. Because if that was the, if this was the matchup last game, they may have been able to crawl back even with that terrible start. Considering just going for the Blitzkrieg, you don't really have much follow up burn though. He has one, he has another one in hand. But However, yeah, the follow up is not looking great. That's the big no. downside of the deck, kind of. You don't have any good draw once you lose the front line. There is a comet. But I mean, if you can get a Panther G off here being buffed up, it's going to be really quite scary. Goes for the trade. Very important. If you leave it here, it ends up getting flam panzered. Probably playing the flam panzer on the panzer too. Just to get rid of the tanks on board so they cannot get buffed by Henschel. Could have gone for the Arado first, but it's preferencing taking the front line. 
potential coming out, but yeah, Artemisia the... just not finding what they need in this matchup. I think that's a big downside of going first with this deck. Like you have two less cards, and if your opponent can just kill your early aggression units, you're just stuck with a hand like Artemisia's having right now. And here's that Panther G. No Panther tanks G. here for Artemisia to buff up. It's a really good Mar Nostrum target. Unfortunately, you cannot play Mar Nostrum and attack next turn. Artemisia is thinking, hey, I've got free turn lethal with these comets, so long as they can't heal or guard. Um, but we know otherwise. Like you say, they're not able to heal next turn, so. Go to the front line with the Panda G, so you yep. can. Monarchstrom with next turn and attack. Knowing that only a second Percy from your opponent could get rid of it. I mean, yeah, if you if you had a way of killing with this Panther G, you may better just end the game of but yeah, I mean, Artemisia unfortunately... has to take the shot here to win yeah. next turn. Uh, there's no other play. Unfortunately for Artemisia, not going to work out. Manostrum coming out, and I believe that will pretty much be GG. I, I don't see any way of winning the game against the Manostrum Panther G. And I mean, this oh, was this... the original Panther G... Uh, you know, my Nostrum combo. This, this was what. Oh, we lost bubbles. What people did when my Nostrum first came out. You slapped. Oh no, your yeah. internet just broke. Okay, what yeah, and now? Artemisia yeah. just yeah, we're back. Artemisia just realized um, no way to get rid of the Panther G, and Tang Tang with the two-one lead here now. When he wins the next game, he's OCC winner in May. You know, I was talking that entire time. I was doing some top tier casting right there. We heard everything. You've been wait. You, I think you've been not there for two seconds. I don't know. I, so I did. A... Everyone got your prime casting here. My, my prime casting, yeah. And there you go. So it's two one to Tang Tang. Now to yes. me, going for round three, but we're seeing the thing we saw in the the semifinals match. Or the third uh, third place match, which is just the same deck being bricked over and over again. I think this should be the hardest matchup for Tang Tang with US frontline into this Hummer deck. Like you don't really have any you hard have this removal. Cat, though. Yeah, I mean this is turn four. Sure, you're probably going to the front line next turn with the Red Devils. Or the killing the parachutes, also not bad, but that leaves the front line open for eight attacks. Oh, attack. and this. Oh, wait. This could get very out of hand very quickly. You go eight damage this turn, then next go, you can move up the Henschel, buff, or you can just Blitzkrieg. You can also just move up the Henschel right now, right? Additionally. You can do, but it, it would be killed. And that's. I dare say it. I mean, that, that United We Stand really helped a lot. Although, how Cat's going to come out next turn for Tank Tank? Yeah. yeah, that helped a lot that United We Stand on the parachutes. Yeah. Otherwise, it would be one turn later, but now he can already do this, get rid of the Hummer. And now Artemisia in a situation where he's not having another tank. Needs a Blitzer, finds the Panzer 2A, able to put down the Panzer 2A, put the, uh, the combined arms and rush up for... A little bit of extra uh, aggression. I and... think you have to do it that way. I think you buff and go. No daily dallying. Maybe you're thinking if you move both to the front line, just so one of them gets the Blitzkrieg in next turn. Nine credit, uh, nine health. The round of red devils, which is not helping. One more turn until he can blitz second California, but might just be out of range then with another hand shell. Oh my god. Do we just, we can do it here or? I think you have to, but. Or just drop the California and do we can do it next turn. I don't I see why you would drop the Cali. If you're going to drop any unit here, because you can blitz the Kali out. 
I, I suppose maybe so you can buff it. But it, it feels fairly redundant. What about Red Devil's Unity Strength on the 1 3? Because the problem is, if Artemisia is playing another hand show now, this Panzer 2 is out of California range. So, yeah, you push it to the front line, go for the buff, hit for 5. I'd have almost liked to see the Tano come down so that if you find any uh, Intel cards, you can protect your HQ, but not think, finding one. I think I would have preferred the Red Devils there to get buff from Unity. Sure. And that's they looking would survive. like. It's looking like GG, right? With the Blitzkrieg in hand, that's game for Artemisia. Finally what? finding their win with this deck. And it's going to put it to a 2 2. And I've got to say, this has been. An unbelievably quick best of five yeah, so far. I want to say, what a fast 2 2 five. was that? That was like 20 minutes. I don't know. But yeah, but this final match will be very interesting now. We have US Poland mid range, Legions versus. Which one is left? The Brit US Air, right? Yeah. Ooh. So who's now having we... the advantage? What do you think? Who's taking it home? Is it Artemisia's first OCC win? Or... Artemisia. I'm going for Artemisia. Now, I know this USA Poland deck has quite a bit of hate against these Brit Air decks. You know, you've got support line hate. You've got things like the, the Strap Bombing and the Stars and Stripes. You've got things like Bounce to deal with it. But I just think the draw for this Brit Air deck makes it so damn consistent. Both players finding UWS. However, Tang Tang finding two. What do you think about the, the, the strengths of United we stand at the moment? Is it a little it, bit too strong? Like, look, everybody's just mulligan for it, and everybody is just having such a big impact to the game. Well, so it gives you two... There's, like, multiple different types of tempo in cards. One of those is board tempo, and the other is, like, resource tempo, right? And what United We Stand does is it gives you both board tempo and resource tempo at, yeah. at a rate which is too good. There's another unit which does this, which is the milk truck, but the it costs three credits, and the rate at which it does it isn't worth it compared to this United We Stand. It just gives you too much board tempo as well as a resource tempo to not run. It, it's a very powerful card. Yeah, completely agree. I think it's just the card of this OCC. Like almost every deck we saw runs it whenever there's US um, involved. So there's no US deck where you don't play United We Stand. And yeah, I think Dev should really think about adjusting this card a little bit. Maybe increase the credit cost to three. Not sure if this would kill the card. I think it would still be viable. But I'm pretty sure at the current stage, it's maybe a little bit too strong. Like if you don't find it early in the game, in the mirror matcher, for example, you can be game deciding and we see two of I'm not going for the cas which leaves this bomber in uws range yeah, even the double uws for tank tank i would have really liked to see one of these casters come out you've got another two this is just such a greedy line of play however that draw engine what we spoke about earlier <laughs> there this it deck is. just able to draw and draw and draw yeah, it's like Seven draw cards in it? Yeah, yes. it's got three convoys, two land leases, and two um, mobilize. mobilization. Yeah. Another United We Stand coming out. Not finding very good stuff here from the convoy. Artemisia really, really needs some airplanes. Can't play a Brit air deck without air units. So, three convoys is six cards. Two mobilizers, that's six cards. So that's right, 12. And then two land leases, another eight cards. You've got 20 draw cards. You've got the potential to draw up to 20 cards in this deck. Oh, that mosquito top deck. So you, you have the support to draw over half your deck just with the, the default draw cards. That's not even taking into account your turn draw cards like Monty. It's a little bit ridiculous. Slightly, yeah. Oh, that, that Mosquito really gave Artemisia a good way to fight back into this battle, honestly. Grass and coming down, but tank not long for this world. Really not looking great. 
Neither no. does Artemisia's hand. That Greyhound is great to protect the Mosquito. Well, you can you can buff up and then you can trade and run up. Now the question is, do you do you go for the greedy the greedy trade where you keep both, or do you just trade away this Greyhound and say, you know what, I like having my Mosquito. How do you keep both? Ah, uh, just for the Mosquito and then the trade mosquito, with the Mosquito. Mosquito into the Howcat, Greyhound yep. move up. But I feel like it's risky against this deck. I'd kind just... of like to see them trade away the Greyhound and just keep the Mosquito. Because the only way this Mosquito is getting dealt with really is bounce. And if this gets bounced, you can just reuse its deployment effect. Oh, that leaves a good spot for the Strat bombing now. It certainly does. Oh, finds the plan west. I feel like you should go yeah, go for the strat while it's safe and then save the plan west until you can mass buff. But I feel like maybe you just plan west and mass buff this turn and save the... Oh, a Wellington. You save the strat bomb for when there's more targets. Depends I really how... have to say Amiga's, um, Artemisia's top decks are on point here. Yeah. Right after turn 7, just all the important stuff they need. I mean, they just need a Len Lisa or a Mobilization now, right? I feel like save the finest hour, personally. But wants to go for the quick win. Wants to get it over and done with. Now we'll That's see. A... Tang Tang probably going to put three units down in their support line. Which means able to go for the Monty now. Red Devil's not really what Tang Tang is looking for here. So you're able to go for the Monty, hit face, pin all of this. And you have them on a two-turn clock right now. Yeah, even the guards are not helping. Oh, and there's a Lenlis just in case you needed it. And a convoy. <laughs> oh my <laughs> lord! And it really looks like Artemisia is gonna be taking the OCC into their hands here, finding everything they could possibly need and hope for. Think and they yeah. nix a fighter or bounce. Otherwise, it is awesome. Artemisia's win here today. But still, there's a Lenlis. It's it's yeah. It's not looking good. Uh, it, Tang Tang not having a lot of heal. Only the we can do it in the deck. So I really don't see. If fights back here, then it would be the comeback of the century. But just finding yeah. another unity. Yeah. And that means Artemisia winning the first OCC in their career. Congratulations to Artemisia, but also Tang Tang and all our other uh, competitors today. They've all done really, really well. But that has been enough of me and Spooz for one day. I'm sure you guys are fed up with us already and you need to get rid of us. So we're going to throw it back to Ollie and um, Ollie and Darkness to close up the show, you know, say goodbye and all that. But it's been wonderful. We've had a great time and we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for that spoos and bubbles and congratulations to artemisia second place last month first place this month and their first occ title secured darkness what did you think of that final series uh, the quickest best of five i believe we have ever seen am i right yeah that was fast it, it was like faster than the previous place third match and this was 3-0 so we saw additional two matches in less time that, that was a lot of excitement going on and i didn't have a break to breathe in between well of course it's it's relatively late for those competitive uh competitors there in china and yes congratulations to artemisia it's doing very great day and of course Congratulations to Tang Tang, absolutely stunning performance until the final and 3-2-2 two, two in the final is nothing to be ashamed of. No, absolutely <laughs> not. And I mean, like, it, it could have gone either way, right? Um, yeah. You know once it once it was into the game number five tang tang played uh supremely well, managed to claw back that first game, uh, find exactly what he needed to, but. In the end, Artemisia just a little bit too strong, ending up with the win. So, 
that was uh, that was exciting. That was uh, an extremely good match. You know what I noticed? Uh, you know, we, we do this on a 15 minute delay. And when we were uh, entering game number five, game number one was still going on. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, OK, you know, these are it's going to be some quick finals. But let's take a look at the final standings in the bracket. Uh, there we see it. It is official. It has been put into the bracket, cemented in history. Artemisia secures themselves their first ever Officer Club Championship title. That uh, second place being Tang Tang and then J King 7 taking third place. Congratulations to them and congratulations to all our top eight qualifiers for a fantastic tournament. Uh, it's going to be super exciting to see what comes in the OCC next month. Then, of course, Cards Open uh, is uh, open for signups now. Uh, are you going to participate in that one, Darkness? Um, I, I don't know yet. Probably not because of this uh, social life side quest <laughs> I'm, I'm maintaining currently. I... I well, if 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 it's continuing like that, I will stick to casting during the next one two months. Yeah, but yeah. Wait, did Smash change names? Smash. Yeah, now it's called Start.gg. Uh, so where we do mm -hmm. our cards open tournaments, uh, it used to be called smash.gg. Now it's called start.gg. So if you go to start.gg, you search for cards open, you can find cards open 12. Signups are open for that right now. There's a $1,500 prize pool. It is free to enter. Um, the qualification rounds are uh, basically just bring your single deck. You don't have to submit anything play through the Swiss rounds. So I encourage everybody that is watching that wants to get a taste of competitive cards to sign up there now um, and, you know, play some tournament cards, get involved in the tournament scene. Because what we have seen is that the players that are diligent in playing their opens uh, sometimes make it to the OCCs. So uh, better get cracking. But that's going to be it for us today. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Congratulations to all the players. And, of course, congratulations to Artemisia, Tang Tang, and J King for their placements in this month's Officer Club Championship. We will see you next time. Until then, goodbye. Bye.